Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another Saints Dream, and we have a wonderful game day on display for you today. It's going to be a triple threat. It's going to be ECAC, TFT, ECAC, Grand Finals for Omega Strikers, and then we also have a NACE League of Legends coming at you today. Once again, I'm Matthias, also known as Mothize here, hosting this one up here with Gabe. How you doing? I'm going uh, pretty, pretty well, but uh, I'm really excited for the league game because we have, I think, like an hour of undisturbed League of Legends. <laughs> so one start. game. So about maybe. maybe a game. that I mean, depends how much the Saints dominate. Uh, I, I am expecting very good things. I'm expecting lots of macro coming out uh, from the Saints because they might not be able to just completely plow the early game and go on to late game because this is a really high stakes game, right? Whoever wins this heads to the finals in Orlando, Florida. Orlando. Yes. Disneyland. I, I'm not familiar with the American States. That's fair. That's Geography. Fair. We're Canadian, not my best but subject. hey, we like to send them over there to compete with the best of the best. But before we get totally into League of Legends, let's take a quick look at what else we have happening here today, or just a quick review. First, we have Omega Strikers here happening today, mm -hmm. and that one's amazing. That's going to be the ECAC Grand Finals, and the Saints have not lost a single single map they haven't lost a single game but even further than that they've not even lost a single map they've gone flawless here in the ecac they're going to be going up against fanshawe fuel who has one loss on their record so the saints are looking to stand undefeated throughout this entire league so uh between you and me not to cast a curse but i'm going to cast a curse saints are going to win this one I would have to guess, but the real question is, is are they going to take their first loss? Is Fanshawe Fuel going to give up enough of a fight mm. that the Saints will meet I don't think so. Maker? No? No, nope. right. I don't think so. I'm confident in the Saints. I'm confident as well. I know Bailable, he's a coach. He puts in so much work along with his teammates. They are grinding that game like there's no tomorrow. But then we also have ECACTFT. We have, I think, three players up there in the I grand so, finals, yes. which is crazy. Yeah, no, uh, so we're going to have Kira. Kira's the only one. Our, uh, is we have Kira. Pitsy at the Pitsy, top. Yes. Dominates every game I've ever seen him in. And then we have Tommy and Naku Taiken not too far behind in seventh place. So we actually have two Saints up there. But the ones to look out for right behind Pitsy are going to be Robe, Clemby, and there's a few others between Naku Taiken and the rest. But oh, there's Kira. There's Kira there at the bottom. But yeah. unfortunately, Kira did not make it into playoffs, did not earn enough points. But the ones at the top are going to be the ones here we're going to be seeing today. But, yeah. na but now, moving on from that, yes. adjacent to TFT, you know, the main launcher you have to load up to yeah. get to that is going to be League of Legends. And that is your wheelhouse. How are you Actually, feeling? I, I like the fact that for some reason, they, they have a launcher for TFT on your phone, <laughs> but they don't have it four on the computer which is complete whack like it just is. make a tft launcher I, I never understood that anyways back to actual league <laughs> uh so patch notes came out last week they did uh they nerfed quite a lot of stuff mm -hmm. and buffed not much um so it's gonna be kind of interesting rex I top got absolutely gutted that's uh, fair. <laughs> which was being, I don't know if you saw the pro play. I played but, it. I played it. Uh, yeah, that healing was a little bit insane. Granted, it the was damage was, la player. was lackluster, but it, I mean, Sunfire and then Spirit Visage. I'm sorry, but like, uh, what is that build? No, that that's illegal. Um, but yeah, so that one got a heavy nerf, so we definitely won't be seeing it uh, anytime soon. Although, granted, we didn't see it at all in the collegiate sectors, so we won't have to worry about that too much. Fiora took a uh, very heavy nerf. Believe it or not, she lost a grand total of 280. That is amazing. And as you can say, see, a quick look at the buffs and nerfs. But the draft is ready. So let's Ooh, get the draft right is ready. into let's go. that. All right. Let's see what's going to be happening against Harrisburg University of Science and Technology. I wonder if they'll pick the more... Hextech champs because of that. <laughs> Nonetheless, let's take a look at these bands. Yeah, all right. So starting the Saints off with a Rumble Jace Virus. Um, very standard uh, bands here. Jace being kind of flexible and really good both early and late game. 
Fire is really meta right now, going that lethality build, and he can go on it if they really need that extra damage boost. And the Rumble just being a really staple champion that can be flexed easily, and just a lot of damage with that equalizer. On the side of Heronsburg, they banned the Nico, the Twisted Fate, and the Olaf. We know Ricky's Olaf is terrifying, so it makes complete sense that they would ban that one out. And the Twisted Fate and the Nico. Uh, nobody wants to get pop blossomed. Nobody wants to get jump scared by a pop blossom. And nobody wants to get jump scared by TFTP. That is the summary. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Those are some good bands on the side of Harrisburg. A lot of favorites on the side of the Saints. But hey, Bakery Boy going to be picking Ari first on the side of the Saints. Good pick. Typical pick. A lot of movement. A lot of mobility. But an answer, Harrisburg. Yep. Instant Talia. counter pick to Leah. Now, I, I like the fact that the Saints here are starting off are they're opening the draft with their mid laner because what that enables is once you have your mid laner picked you're essentially um telling the opponent you have to counter pick me mm -hmm. right which means that one of their picks has to be dedicated to that tilia here since it's Ooh, the ari and then the, the jacks going in so here you've got a mage that's a relatively meta and then a jacks that can be flexed both top and jungle right um don't play jack support please <laughs> please don't play jack support um so now here the saints have two options either b uh bleh, i should start with a before b yep. <laughs> either a they pick their jungle which is what they do here they lock in the volley bear and then they lock in their uh their jinx now perk with buying uh, getting a jinx is we already saw the virus being banned out so they can go for those scaling champions and not have to worry too much about getting their early game punished too hard the aphelios is going to be picked to match that jinx now the aphelios against jinx lane i don't know if you've seen that one before i have um, many times <laughs> see i i've never seen a jinx versus aphelios lane because i always tend to fall asleep before i can see it happen <laughs> it because it's a snooze fest because they're just farming um until Aphelios presses R, and for some reason, everybody explodes. <laughs> 400 years, ladies and gentlemen. And we see a Braum ban on the side of a Harrisburg, and then looks hovering a Nautilus ban on the side of the Saints. Makes sense. Trying to ban out these supports here as those the last two to pick on these sides. Also, we have the top laner on the side of the Saints, and I believe the jungler on the side of Harrisburg, unless this is Jack's jungle. Well, it, it, it's... It could be both. Volibear did get nerfed this patch, which is surprising that the Saints pick it up. But he does have good agency in that early game with that Sundered Sky. Um, so we're going to see how that one plays out. I, uh, honestly, I think they're both jungle, but that's just my thoughts. Uh, but yeah, that Braum being banned out pretty much instantly means that they want to pick Nautilus, which is why the Nautilus ban comes out, because Braum's just mm -hmm. a perfect counter to Nautilus. Uh, the Lulu... Wait, what the... They banned Lulu with Aphelios. Okay, so here it kind of makes sense, actually. Um, yeah, they don't want the Jinx to get... Yeah, uh, they don't want the Jinx to get the uh, the Lulu. But the thing is, both Jinx and Aphelios need Enchanter supports, right? Now, hear me out here. They buffed Sona. They doubled her healing. So, like, Sona with the Aphelios? Thoughts? <laughs> maybe, come on. Maybe, we'll see. Come on, guys. Sona? Sona? Come on. Uh -huh. Let's see it. Let's see it. They're going to take some time to think about this because yeah. this is a big decision to make, especially right here with these support picks. You want to see what this Aphelios yeah. well, needs, right? What do you have left to pick even? You don't well, have the Nautilus. Uh, first is the either. strategy of the pick and ban. Why ban the Lulu oh. when you could have picked the Lulu? They had first pick here. Oh, you're right. So if they That's ban Melio, pick Lulu, you have Lulu Aphelios. I mean, so uh, uh, it, it, words are hard. So apparently, they prefer Melio over Lulu. Now, to be fair, the last time we saw Aphelios in the meta, Melio didn't exist. So maybe there's some secret tech that Melio is just absolutely busted uh, with Aphelios. To be fair, the healing output of Melio um, is insane in that late game. Plus, the extra cleanse is very helpful. Here, I told you that Volibear is not top. He is jungle. Yep. Ricky's Renekton is going to be locked in. A Perfect flex pick, just in case that that Jax is indeed in the jungle. And now all that is left is to pick out that support, unless it's Renekton support or Ari support. Please do not be any of those. <laughs> it's most likely going to be the support picking right now. And what is left that's good with Jinx? That's going to be a Rakan going for the engage support is an interesting pick here. Well, engage support. Rakan is a... <laughs> he's like the 200... The, 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 he's the Aphelios of support in my eyes. <laughs> he's an enchanter, or sorry, he's a Cassante of 
of mm -hmm. support, not not the Aphelios. Because his kit is very straightforward to understand. What makes no sense is the fact that he's both an enchanter and an engaged support. Yep. It's like, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna um, heal my team and I'm going to engage for them. So what's your downside exactly? Plus the dashes. <laughs> I mean, jeez, don't get me started with the dashes. Uh, but yeah, the Gragas here being picked out into that Renekton, honestly, Gragas is just a state like solid. Actually, we don't even know if it's a Gragas top or a Gragas jungle. I because believe... it could be both. Ooh, Gragas right. jungle has been getting uh, pushed a little bit more. I, I feel like it's going to be a Gragas top, though. That's you, the yeah. more typical position right now. Jack's jungle yeah. works a little bit better, too. More typical. So just based on these team comps, who would you have to give the edge to? Well, I mean, nobody has Sona, so I can't just instantly <laughs> say, uh, yeah, that team is going to lose. But uh, here... It's hard to say. It's going to be mostly centered around who covers bot more in terms of the jungle. Um, if it is a Gragas into a Renekton, I'd say Ricky's probably going to get really annoyed because playing against Gragas is boring as hell. Uh, because, you know, poke with Q and he just counter engaged all your engages with the belly slam. So he's just going to get bored out of his mind farming. Uh, since they both have sustain in lane. But if it's a Jax top, different story. Mm -hmm. uh, because then there's going to be a lot of dueling in that top lane. So Ricky might do like a, a, an ego dive on the Gragas if he gets too bored. But aside from that, I'd say it's pretty much a farm lane top. And then uh, in the bot lane, winner is probably going to be the Jinx or Khan here. Just because engaged support into Melio sucks. Um, or, well, it, it sucks for Melio, sorry. Yep. <laughs> uh, he doesn't want to get caught out. And it is an airborne, not a stun or a root, so he can't cleanse that. This uh, Aphelios, by the way, is 100% going cleanse. Because, I mean, charm, stun. Chompers, root, yep. stun, airborne. <laughs> uh, well, the airborne, you can't cleanse it. But there is oh, another yeah. charm on that, too. So, meh. Uh, yeah, don't really want to mess with that. On the other side, Volibear jungle. Volibear is good for diving bot. It's, yeah, I would it's just fun. say Volibear is a better pick right here. Jax can be very good if he can get the jump on you, and if he gets going, he's great, but I think, think Volibear is just more consistent. Volibear is more consistent, but Jax has better peel for the EDC. Oh, that's, that's one true, of the things true. that I like to play around, is if Volibear is a very frontline bruiser, Jax, you can choose whether, like, if you're far behind as Jax, it's easy. You build Zhonya's, and then uh, all you do is you stick to your ADC like an enchanter, and whenever somebody gets on your ADC, you just go spin, and they go away from your ADC all of a sudden for no apparent reason. <laughs> so, yeah. No apparent reason. Uh, from that standpoint, like, Jax does have a really good neutral, but if Volibear gets ahead, it's unplayable for literally everybody. Because if he gets his ult up, you already know he's going to be diving bot on cooldown. Like, Aphelios won't be playing the game. No. Because he won't have a tier 2. <laughs> at 2 minutes. Yeah, that's going to be rough. So I would give the edge out over to the Saints, I would say, for this team comp overall. I would, yes. Saints would win this one. I realized I was completely missing the point of that yeah, okay. <laughs> Going over like in the different lane matchups. Um, no, that Saints was good. Do that have good. an advantage, but wildcard is on the Talia. If she can get a really good, um... <laughs> I'm trying to remember the name of the spell. The rocks, the slow. Yes, rocks. the rock mines. Yep. Um, <laughs> the the land mines that are made of rock. I. I, I don't know how the, the physics work mines. on that yeah, one, but fine. hey, we're going to assume it works. Well, uh, yeah, if she can bending, land, you know? yeah, <laughs> earth bending, sure. So yeah, if she can lay down one of those really good minefields, no problem, because Jax has a jump, Ari has a dash. Um, Volibear jumps. Technically, he's unstoppable, <laughs> so he takes damage, but he doesn't oh, okay, okay. get stunned. Um, and then Jinx is like the only one without a dash, right? Yes. So... If she can catch the Jinx with uh, an Airborne into the landmines, it, it fight's over. But yeah, it's uh, it's going to depend. It's, very, uh, it's also hard to catch a Jinx if she got a kill. She's going to be zooming. Oh yeah, she's going to be zooming <laughs> and uh, zooming and shooting. Yep. <laughs> Going a little crazy. A little bit too much, maybe. <laughs> so what do you think is a weak point on either side of the team? Okay, so, so biggest weak point, I would say, when it comes to the Saints 
is their damage output. They have the Jinx, they have the um, Renekton, and they have the Ari, right? If Renekton goes for that more Bruisery build, mm -hmm. you have a lot of um, healing and a lot of tenacity and a lot of tankiness. But if you go for that like PTA build, if you're familiar with that one, uh, oh, usually the Parent build... Teachers Association. Yeah. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I, did, I did not expect that whatsoever. <laughs> parent teacher associate. But anyways, yeah, you're talking. The last time I heard that it was in like elementary school. True, Holy true. We don't have them too much anymore as we're adults here <laughs> at the college. Oh but my god! Don't remind me. Jeez. <laughs> I have to file taxes. <laughs> but speaking uh, of taxes, what do you think is going to be the most taxing thing as you're covering that? Well, usually it's the junglers with smite and your cannon. Mm -hmm. uh, but other than that, uh, yeah. Big Biggest weakness is going to be that Aphelios Milio on the bot side. It's going to get dove a lot with that volley bear, and you're going to need to be covering that like 24/7. So if the jungler can't take his co-op camps, uh, they basically just delegate all that those void creatures to um, the volley bear, right? Because mm -hmm. it's instant. Okay, I need to cover bot every second, so he just gets those free objectives. Granted, you get drag, but when it comes to having a Renekton, good split pusher, an Ari, relatively okay split pusher, and a Jinx, towers don't exist with Jinx, um, <laughs> I don't think you want to give those grubbies away. Yeah, the grubs I've noticed have mattered so, so much, especially in these collegiate games. Whoever seems to get the most grubs ends up taking the game much quicker. If they get all six, we're usually in for like a sub 30 minute game, like a sub around the 20 minute yeah. mark it goes very very quick after that but tonight's not going to be very quick because it is a best of five tonight <laughs> it, we are going to be in for a marathon oh, of yeah. league games but it's going to be amazing i'm excited to see what comes out speaking of best of five what do you think yes. the score line is going to be oh okay hold on let me hmm <laughs> Ah, uh, yes, using my divine will to somehow conjure a, a, a picture the, 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 in the my mind. The tarot card deck. Yeah, the tarot card deck. <laughs> That's what we were talking about last time. Uh, okay, honestly, I think since this is a best of five, Saints, we might see like a partial river sweep. All right. Like maybe like a, a one and three. I think Harrisburg's going to take the first game at least. Yeah, maybe. Although, All right. And what is this? What is, yeah, what is happening here? All of the Saints have went top lane. Meanwhile, it seems like down in the river, it's going to be Harrisburg lurking for defense against an invade. I don't know what this macro is, but it's not... The, uh, maybe they were trying to cheese the Gragas level 1, and the Gragas didn't show up to lane, so they just canceled it. Yeah, Gragas up there in... The the top of jungle, making sure those skills came out early game, but now it looks like we're going to reset back to a neutral standard game as usual. Yep. So looking at these runes, uh, things to point out would be probably the Grasm Gragas. This isn't a phase rush or a first strike. This is that tanky Gragas that goes Water of Ages uh, along with the... Um, Words are hard. Uh, Rod of Ages, and then he goes Rocket Belt, and then he goes. Um, what is the last one? Rocket Belt, and. Ah, uh, words are hard. Uh, Cosmic Drive. Cosmic Drive. There it is. Uh, that's his core build usually uh, with like Neandries and stuff like that. It's pretty interesting, very nice to play around, uh, but for whoever you're leaning against, it's annoying as hell because what happens is you grasp proc every time you belly slam. So, uh, yeah, it's not a fun time. It's a lot of percent max health damage you don't want to have to deal with. Here though, the Aphelios is absolutely dominating that uh, bot lane, just kind of holding the Jinx Rakan at bay, uh, getting that level two first actually, Maddie pathing towards the top side, so it seems to be prioritizing uh, getting those respawns towards the grub objective here. Ricky though, trading really, really well with, uh, is that Ego? Yeah, that is Ego, uh, in the top side just trying to keep as much of his health as possible uh, because what happens is he has an offensive healing, right, with Renekton, it's the Q, uh, versus Gragas who has a more passive-centered uh, healing with his, well, passive, 
where he doesn't actually need to do anything other than use spells, and with 30 mana cost on uh, his W, I believe, it's really, really cheap to regen his health. It's not that much, granted, but it is a pretty significant one once you give him time to heal. So you do need to take uh, some really good trades and heal a lot if you are playing back Ragnus. If you're in the mid lane though, uh, Duckman is uh, getting pretty low on mana, so probably gonna have to reroll soon. That's summon Airy. An interesting choice is here. Maddie goes wow. in for the gank. Belly slam instantly onto Ricky, oh, and the no. gank is instantly negated. That is that is Gragas in a nutshell. Yeah, Gragas has so much movement for such a big guy, but we love him for that. He's, he's very good get in. Well, he only has potential. one movement ability. But it, it, it's it's good. It's good, yeah, especially it's good. in the early game. And now we're seeing Baker Boy almost ca he checks oh, the bush, gets a charm. That's gonna stop the back. That's huge. And now engaging the bot lane. No one has fallen yet. It's still very even. No way the t <laughs> the scales are tipping just yet. Uh -oh. but I think we might see that right here as Manny moves in for the gank. Doesn't quite get it, but he gets the stun actually. And now with Baker Boy missing the orb just slightly, he's still gonna get out. Yep, Duckman lives to fight another day. Uh, not gonna be turned into roasted duck just yet. Uh, that bear is not that hungry. But, with that being said here, Ricky, oh, just walked on a wart. Uh, doesn't know it's there though, it isn't pinged. So it's gonna be interesting to see if possible, like possibility that Maddie shows up and uh, tries to go for another gank or not, but this, uh, this Jax here is seemingly going topside. I don't know if it's to defend from a gank or yeah, Ricky here gonna reset, just crash his wave. So you don't really need to worry too much about that if you are Renekton. Just gonna try and get, oh, wait, hold on. Why did he cancel his back? What's he doing? What's he cooking? Oh, he wants to get Ego to keep on, uh, to stay in the wave, he thinks he wins this fight. Do you think he wins this fight? Uh, I think he will. I believe. Okay. Win this one out, but hey, we're seeing the Grubs start to be taken first by Harrisburg University here. Like we were talking earlier, usually he who claims the Grubs first usually takes the lead. Now, it doesn't seem like the other jungler is going for Dragon just yet, but Harrisburg just going to take two, take the yep. lead on the Grubs. Get out where Maddie now just gonna play catch up and try and get the last remaining extract. Yeah, well, the trick is with the grubs, right? If you take the first two and leave the third one, you guarantee that they can't get the buff uh, or the um, the mini grubs for when they're sieging towers, right? Because you need uh, five or six to get those mini grubs. So they get the, um, the damage over time, even if they get the other three but they don't get that major buff that comes with having five or six. So it's kind of a, a strategy that's been employed lately uh, to kind of spare you your time. But of course, having six is the optimal amount, but here he basically said, I'm gonna have five or that's it. But ooh, hold on, going on in the bot lane here. Lots of trading. Yeah, this is lots of trading here, but the wave's just going the way of Harrisburg. A Sinclair has to wait under tower and Harrisburg starting the dragon, the first dragon. That one's gonna be a big one here. It's gonna fire Drake here. Now Saints, are they gonna answer here? Botling comes up to defend. And now mid lane there also encroaching, trying to get the pinch off. But it looks like this is still gonna be uncontested as all four of Harrisburg are here defending it. And now we see an engage here on the Ari gets one stun, goes in. But the Jax is just a little bit stronger right now, whacking away, getting the very, very low. One kill gonna go their way. We get a trade finally, but it looks like it's gonna go the Saints way as they get two, oh, looking to get three. Charm. And now they're looking to flip the dragon. Yup. Three to one, a double kill on that Jinx. Looking absolutely fantastic. Uh, first Blood did go to Jax though, so that is a Spellblade right in his pocket. Uh, but yeah, that Jinx getting two kills is uh, exactly what you want. You want that Jinx to get ahead, uh, get those items you want, you know, that three item power spike on your Jinx, and then, uh, then she can go crazy, quite literally. She's already crazy, but <laughs> even crazier. Brace the insanity there in the bot lane. Here we are, Maddie clearing his jungle away. Right now, the Saints got... That was a very good fight for them. They didn't end up getting the dragon out of it, but they still got quite a few kills here, put themselves into a leading position. Yeah, here the uh, main subject of thought is probably going to be the fact that, first of all, why is teleport considered unleashed, or am I seeing things? 
I think you might need glasses as we've talked once before. Oh, God. <laughs> but either way. Yeah, okay, no. No, yeah, I need glasses. Or maybe it's just the fact that it was on cooldown, so it looked a little whack. Anyways. Maybe. maybe. Uh, yeah, so here they're going to have to like reattempt the Drake. But it's kind of hard to do um, with the current tempo of the game. But now that Jinx actually just pushed that wave in, they do have an opportunity. They're going to start clearing that vision. Uh, but of course, once you start clearing vision, everybody on the map knows what your intentions are. So you see kind of Jax hesitating to go to Dragon or not. Probably going to try and cover his mid lane here as uh, Volibear is trying to look for that gank. But... Oh, go wait, he's it. going for it. He's go got six. Deep. No, he's not, but Ricky is invading this jungle right now, trying to lock down this Jax, and they're just going all in on the Jax. But Jax manages to leap out there and get out of the fight, Scott Furry. Yep, Dominus was dedicated to that fight, uh, along with Spirit Rush, I believe. But here, Miracle getting kind of caught out. Weaver's Wall going to come in, lock down Miracle from his escape, and Mike... Mikkel? Mikkel gonna get that kill. That's okay, gonna be it. Good for Harrisburg. Let's gonna open them up for Dragon. And will the start come out? No, they're gonna have to clear the ward first. Probably wait a little bit to throw the Saints off. But now it's a lot of pressure on the Saints. They have to try and defend this Dragon as they think they might as well be starting it right now. I do believe they are starting it. Uh, I mean, they have a lot of healing with Melio, so you don't need to worry too much about Dragon damage. Uh, but that doesn't mean that the Saints have lost the temple right now. And Remember what I was talking about, that Ego Dive? Well, uh, we just kind of have it. Ego, uh... Ego just... <laughs> he, he's got the Gragas place. He's got the Gragas, and you need a little bit of Ego if you're up there in the top lane. Gets the lead to start. At least we're up there, but the Jinx up 2-0 right now. Looking to see what Rock Moon is going to do. But hey, speaking of Maddie. And the top lane, he's going to be starting Grubs here. And it looks to be uncontested as there's no vision from Harrisburg. I'm going to know that's happening. Yep. Well, I mean, to be fair, Jax already got two. So he knows he doesn't have to worry about the massive buff that comes from the uh, the Void Grubs. So all he has to worry about is, oh, no, they're going to have a little bit of extra shrew damage on yes. our towers. Uh, so it was kind of like along the plan. He decided, essentially, I'm going to take the first two. going to leave. going to let him have the other four. Uh, I don't need to worry about that buff. We get Dragon, we're happy. Uh, but, ooh, hold on here. Beautiful charm. Bakery boy. He's been practicing those. Yes, <laughs> he can snipe those out of thin air, it seems, sometimes. But with the 3v1 happening, I don't think Bakery boy should engage just yet. No, but here we did see uh, Kidbert's on wards. So, of course, Ricky going to decide to do some proxying, get some damage on that tower passively with the minions. Unless, of course, Gregus wants to tank it, but not advisable. Uh, Wave on the bot side is pushing right into Aphelios here. So they're going to have to uh, play this one safe, but of course, this is a volley bear. You don't play safe under tower. <laughs> so there might be a dive coming out here. Yeah, we can see that Jack's going to try and cover his bot lane just because Volibear just shows up and you need to cover. Oh, we have a fight here with the Renekton and the Gragas here. And we also have a fight in the mid lane with the Mages. And now Ari going to get very, very low, but not going to get the kill. Oh, actually dashes in, gets the kill. And that is Bakery Boy getting another kill here in the mid lane. Yup, that last dash coming in clutch. The, uh, the minefields were already used, so... Had the ability to just dive that tower. In the top lane, though, um, yeah, it's another one of those. We both heal, so we're both going to sit here and farm. Unless Gregus decides to pull out the cake. Because Gregus is the only one with kill pressure here when he uses his tower, right? If you use the keg plus the tower, you just have insane amounts of damage uh, or potential damage. Plus, Gregus kind of at that point. Wait, what is that build? What, for Gregus? Sunfire? <laughs> No, that, that that won't be a Sunfire, surely. Well, I mean, what else would it be? It it's Bomby Cinder. <laughs> Bro, that is whack. That is a little... Sunfire keep on Gragas. I mean, clearly I'm not uh, up to date on the Gragas tech, but speaking of the Gragas tech, the keg is going to come out. Ricky getting stunned up, pops the Dominus, tries to get some healing off, but here he just can't get enough down 
to burst down Ego. And uh, yeah, his Ego is going to take a little bit of a blow on that one. As here in the mid lane, the Volley Bear Ultimate connects, shuts down the tower, and shuts down the Talia. Instant kill. This Talia is now 0 3. Not having a good time. Yikes. Yeah, that is a little bit of a yikes here. And now, seeing Rock Boom start to engage here. Doesn't quite find too much. Bakery Boy just peppering them from afar. Saint's still in the lead, but steadily losing it as Harrisburg is starting to catch up. Uh, I would say they have a little bit better opportunities, but the Saints are just dominating in terms of kills, but tower-wise, the Saints still have a little bit of catch-up to do. Yeah, the Saints are playing catch-up when it comes to that tower domination. Um, but here, as the next objective is coming up, we have a uh, an Ocean Dragon just getting ready to go. And Volibear here gonna probably take his red buff and then get ready for the dragon. Uh, try and contest, clear some vision. As we can see here, Miracle already trying to clear that control ward, getting caught out, but not bursted hard enough to have to worry. Uh, as ooh, Rift Herald is actually gonna be started here by Kidberts. Um, so Ricky gonna go down and oh, this is gonna be a team fight here. Got a big team fight brewing right here, right now. And now Jax goes in, engages. There's Atelia ult. And now the knockup comes up. And now they're all falling down. Ego finds one on Maddie. It looked like the Saints were about to win it there, but they all got their health back here. And now the Saints are going to have to back off. Yep. A really clean wall there. Absolutely stopping the Saints from engaging onto that ADC, giving them the time to just DPS, uh, get that damage laid down onto the front line and forcing the saints to retreat only one goes down but that also does give the herald uh to the red team of uh harrisburg so they get the advantage they win that objective here if i was the saints i would have said forget the herald it's not that important go for the dragon because if you go for the dragon you promise that they can't have a an instant for dragons and soul right you delay that soul and it gives you a lot of time to stall. Plus, Ocean Dragon is just nice to have, you know? It's a lot of healing. Yeah, now the Saints looking to jump into this blue bottom jungle right here. Not gonna quite do it though, but they are just camping this mid lane. They wanna go for another team fight. They wanna try and get back in a lead here. Yeah, well, Volley Bear Ultimate is up, and you remember what I was saying about perma diving that bot lane. Uh, apparently, that's not gonna be on the schedule today because uh, Dragon meets on the menu, boys. <laughs> They're gonna burst that dragon down in no time at all. Get that stake, medium rare at least. And now the heads, hex gates are activated. It's gonna be hex tech soul, which is pretty decent for both sides. And now Ricky going in, trying to take him down, but it's not gonna quite work. Just gonna have to play very carefully under tower. Yeah, Ricky is not having a good time, uh -oh. and he's about to have a worse one here. The dive is absolutely ready to go. Drax spin to win but doesn't connect doesn't get that stun but that tower will go down uh so in the mid lane or sorry in the bot lane here uh bakery boy does trade turrets which is a very good macro call here uh but oh, that wow, rip here oh my god they're lane. shoving top lane going in for the charge it's gonna do a lot of damage and now the saint the <laughs> harrisburg is just gonna burst down this tower and the saints are gonna have to run away in fear as there's at least one more charge left in that but no it's gonna go down the junglers there to make sure that thing doesn't go too far yeah rift heralds uh rift herald deals damage watch out for that but here uh blue buff going to be taken by harrisburg uh, just gonna try and deny, Matt, uh, yeah, Maddie as much CS as possible, right? You deny him gold. Uh, so, one of the things that's kind of important to keep in mind, ooh. Ooh, the quickness being popped out of the Rakan here, getting a two-man airborne. Melio gonna fall down immediately to Baker Boy. Uh, ooh, wait, never mind, Baker Boy gets a double kill, takes out the Aphelios. Only the Jax and the Gragas left, along with the Talia. Miracle brought down very low. Talia gonna pick him up. Trades the kill. It's a two for one. Are we taking that deal? Are we taking a turret for it? I think they're taking a turret they for it. We're gonna take a turret for it. And now the Saints gonna continue to shove this at mid lane just a little bit further. It's gonna turn around, turn tail, and run as they see the Gragas is here. You don't want to mess with him. Just such a hard tank to deal with at this point in the game. I mean, he's got Sunfire. 
I still don't know who built Sunfire on Gregus, but anyways, uh, <laughs> he's got that tier of the goddess, which is probably going to turn into a Fimble Winter, uh, seeing that Kindle gem there. So this is not a damage Gregus at all. This is straight up tank Gregus, which... Put him in there, let him absorb the damage, take some hits for the team. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about that, because your keg isn't going to do any damage. I prefer hybrid, personally. Yeah, I'd have to agree with you there, but nonetheless, we're seeing Ricky here, all the way in the bot lane, just trying to clear, trying to get his foot in the door. He is down to one at right now. As we turn back to Harrisburg, they are looking to take one for one, trying to get this mid turret right back. Holy Bear Stun's gonna go out, doesn't quite land, and now he's just gonna keep on schmoovin' that Gragas is unstoppable. Yeah, the Gragas is very tanky, but uh, the Ari is definitely gonna deal a lot of damage. Because that is something to note. All of the Saints' damage is uh, AD aside from Ari. So, having Bakery Boy ahead is crucial. If he wasn't ahead, you would only have one damage type. So, uh, gotta keep that in mind at all times. The Horizon Focus already picked up. So you've got a very strong Ari, an IE almost completed, just needs um, one cloak and one, uh, one another purchase after that for that IE. Two item Jinx, pretty strong, not that strong though. Uh, the Aphelios does get the Kraken Slayer too, but a little bit further behind uh, his counterpart. So he's gonna need to play a little bit of catch up. The uh, Jax only has Triforce. Which is I, but it's not that good. Ricky, ooh, he's getting kited hard. He's not having a good time. No, no, he's not. He's having a little bit of a rough time here this game. But hey, there's always next game. He's just gonna shove the lanes, be where his team is not, and try and keep things even. Now we're gonna look to Maddie here, going in the mid lane with Bakery Boy. We're looking to get these three mid. I think they win the 2v3, I don't know, they're just gonna run out of it, they don't even want to mess with that right now. <laughs> yeah, no, they don't want that smoke just yet, it is pretty dangerous, although surprisingly, this is a uh, past 20 minute game, so this is not what the Saints are used to, right? They don't usually play scaling, they usually play early game, so it's nice to see the Saints playing to something that isn't just early game. Here, Rakan pops the quickness, misses the airborne, but does end up getting the charm on two, both Gregus and Jax moving towards the Saints, but nothing is going to come from that engage, so I don't know how I feel about it. Yeah, nothing quite happened there, but hey, it's not the worst thing in the world. No one died on either side, so just going to be off cooldown for the next fight. But next dragon is up. It's going to be Hextech. Oh, I don't like start Hextech that one soul. right away. Yeah, Hextech soul here, definitely something that you want for the Saints, uh, because I mean, both those ADCs absolutely love attack speed. Right, it's Felios and Jinx. So you do not want to mess with uh, whoever is going to have the Hexax Soul this time. But yeah, Dragon does end up going, wait, hold on. Super Mega Death Rocket got launched, but where? Uh, I think up towards the jungle, it didn't, I don't think it hit its for mark Vision, though. maybe? Could have been for Vision. Could have been just to try and scope things out. Uh, nonetheless, a little bit of a question mark moment, but <laughs> it's fine. I'm sure oh. there's a purpose. We're just not big brain enough to I see mean, okay. just yet. There are question mark moments, and there's real question mark moment. Like, did you see, uh, what was it? The trail, the, the new trailer for League that came out the, 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 uh, for like the new season with Trindomir and Kindred? Oh, yes. You saw that one? Okay, at the end, Ash ease the sky. <laughs> like, that is a question mark moment. A little bit of a question mark. Oh. Anyways, uh, <laughs> my tangent on stuff that is partially leak. Uh, but yeah, here the Saints are... They're in a wacky position. They have the gold advantage, but they need to try and force something, right? They need to, to force a fight, preferably a Baron, but just to like make a threat and then get even more gold snowball that harder. Or they can try and gamble for a tower. A tower is another option. Uh, but one way or the other... Oh, oh, there's a big charm there, but it's not going to quite turn into a kill, but that's half the health off of Jax. That's going to be pretty nice going forward in the next fight. Yep, I think that could translate into a Baron, since Jax is going to have to recall, but it's all about if they know or if they don't know that the Jax has recalled. I think they oh. know. Do they know? I mean... Uh, They're clearing vision. 
Yeah. A few I, of them are backing, though. Or maybe they're faking the back? I don't know. The, eh? Rakan? They're not all there, so I think they're not going to quite start it. They're just going to keep the pressure on Harrisburg, make them have to wait around in that jungle, kill some time as they send Jinx and Bakery Boy top and mid. Try to shove these lanes. Yeah, well, the Renekton does have that TP available, so Ricky doesn't need to worry too much about that team fight. When it does start, he can take care of it pretty easily. What my main concern is would be uh, a pick, because whoever gets the pick first will instantly win this. Uh, pretty much no questions asked, because there is a lot of damage to go around in this fight. So, ooh, maybe they will try. They might try to force it because here they're, they're, they are clearing vision hard. They're really playing around that Baron. And they're basically, they're forcing uh, here's Oh yeah, they're starting it. There you go. Look at that. There's the start. And now there's the response from Harrisburg as they start to move in right here. You see the blue ward though. The Saints know it's coming. They're going to get into position and try and win this fight. <laughs> there it is. Don't get a charm. Bakery Boy still just lurking on this edge here. Going to play very, very carefully and try not to push up too far. Now they do stop the Baron take. And now Harrisburg might be the ones to take this. Yeah, well, the thing is, Harrisburg here just kind of threw their tower under the bridge or under the bus. Oh, they kind of had to. They can let Saints get Baron. Yeah. Great plays. There's a super mega death rocket. Just barely misses from the dash. Ooh. And Barlow just gonna barely get out with a little Miracle? bit of health. And now Miracle gonna go in, get the knock up on Barlow and Maddie gonna take a Barlow out. Now you see it three on three. On oh three. the stun! Four on three. There it is. Five on three as the whole teams are happening. Here's a big team fight. Ricky gets one, and now this Greg is just tanking it up here in the front lines as Ricky moves in to try and take out the squishies in the back. They get the Gragas, and now there's just two left oh on my the side God, of Harrisburg. The got one. Is this going to be an ace? A double kill from Rockboom. It's not going to be an ace as Jax is still going to be up with just a little bit of health. Yeah, I mean, you saw the amount of Chakrams that were going around on that uh, green and white. I mean, great weapons for Felios to team fight with, but he just didn't manage to get that DPS down. And it's just. That's kind of what happens when you don't have enough peel or when you can't find those opportunities because ADCs are really weak in the current meta, right? They don't deal that much damage. And now, one of the reasons why Riot does that is because uh, in pro play or in higher levels of competition, ADCs are low-key busted. Yes. <laughs> but depending on which level you're playing, um, sometimes that just doesn't happen. And this is a perfect case for one of those. It's that... Like, they, they, they're looking for burst windows, but there's no burst windows to, you know, actually start dealing DPS as uh, an ADC. You don't have those areas, and that's why uh, burst ADCs are kind of what's in the meta. That's why they go lethality nowadays, mostly at least. Yeah, that is a great analysis of ADCs in a nutshell by Gabriel. But hey, there's going to be a team fight here. Let's see if... Your information is correct. Let's see what this ADCs can do right here. We see Ego up there in the front lines trying to tank the damage, but he's going to get very, very low. The Saints all around the same health pool. None of them going to go down, though. Another stun comes out. There's the landmines. Rock, going to find one, and now he's going to keep on moving. The dominoes are falling here as they're all getting very, very low. They're all one shot. There it is. Three ball Whoa. in synchronicity. Rock, boom, and Bakery Boy killing four all the way down there. Now it's just Barlow left, and your information we just got word that Barlow used to be a saint so this might be a little bit of saint on saint violence or former saint as they are just cruising on through taking a tower and taking an inhib and this is looking to be game right here yeah that is looking like game for the saints i mean that quasi ace is great melio just out here dancing uh he can't really do much one way or the other i mean look at him He's Melio. It's not like he's building AP or crit. Uh, so yeah, Nexus will fall here. Just great macro from the Saints being able to find those team fights and force uh, Harrisburg to get into that team fight. Right. I think one of the, like the biggest parts of this play was the Baron force. They said, okay, well we're gonna start Baron. If you guys don't contest, we get Baron. Great trade deal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you guys do contest, we leave and take your tower. Oh, yeah. Which one do you want to lose, Baron or Tower? Yeah, those were some amazing plays from the Saints. They've kind of forced 
Harrisburg's hand a few times there. Like, hey, we'll give you a choice, but it's a win-win for me every time. I mean, there were very few situations where the Saints were lose. There were a few gambles, but it seemed to pay off every single time. But hey, that is game one of potentially five, but this is looking to go the Saints way so far. I'm expecting maybe a 3-0 at this point, but I'm Okay, ready let's for not Harrisburg. push it that far. You don't but, think so? Okay, look, here's the thing, though, right? When it comes to leak, you see one performance, like, yeah, that was dominant. They absolutely stomped that. I mean, they're clearly going to win. But the thing is, half the game is the draft. That's true. Right? That's true. So, uh, to a certain extent... You could say, yeah, okay, they absolutely dominated, but, like, if they had counter picks on every lane, you know, no wonder they dominated. So, from that standpoint, you kind of have a scenario where you have a really dominant performance that could go another way later on. And that's kind of what we might see in this next game, because I expect a little bit more uh, from Harrison. Yes, Harrison, here, just, like, with the draft, with those picks, maybe going a little bit more for that early game, knowing that the Saints don't really have that weakness in the late game macro either, that could be an option. Yeah, I'm interested to see what we'll see from both of those. But we're going to take a quick break before we get into game two and maybe even TFT if it goes long enough. So we'll yep. see you very soon after a break.
Hello, everybody, and a welcome back to the stream. We're just about to get into game two. We have the draft at the ready. We saw St. Clair take a dominant game one, but now oh, wow. we're partway into this. Let's cover the bands real quick. St. Clair bending out Rumble, Jace, Avaris once again, and then Twisted Fate. Similar bands on both sides, but they're going to ban out the Jacks, even though they picked Jacks themselves. So going through the picks, you want to run us through those, Gabe. Yes. All right. So we are starting off with some pretty interesting ones. Uh, so the Nico coming out first, pretty good pick in the mid lane. Pop Blossoms, Stealth, we all love to see it. Uh, so really interested to see how that one goes. Maddie instantly locking in that Volley Bear Nautilus for the one, two. Not really showing your hand, but at the same time, uh, it kind of gives you time to stall your draft. So great picks there. The Sin Zhao being picked up as a counter to the Volley Bear and the Jinx being picked out. Essentially saying, okay, we want to go for that late game with Sin Zhao, uh, kind of boosting their uh, early game slash protecting their early game. The Ari being picked up again by Bakery Boy. We've seen him. He's good on it. What else is there to say? Yep. <laughs> uh, the Saints. Oh, Banning okay. Of Gwen. Banning the Hollowed Seamstress. That is unusual. You don't really see Gwen bans. A little bit. Like, she gets picked as a counter pick. Uh, unless Ricky. I think they just don't like dealing with Gwen. But, like, a Gwen is only used in one circumstance, and that is to piss off Cassante players. <laughs> <laughs> Which, I mean, to be honest, is a very good, very viable option. Uh, but, I don't know. The Gwen ban seems a little oh, whack. Kaisa ban also on the side of Heritage. Oh, wow. Really banning that bot lane out. Well, yep. I mean, there's only a few more lanes to choose from bot and top. And I think they're a little bit more worried about bot after last game with Rockboom going, being so dominant. So now, what is Rockboom going to choose? The Jinx is gone. The Kaisa is gone. The Zeri? The Zeri! Ooh. We've been waiting to see the Please, Zeri. Please, I do not want to see a Yumi. <laughs> I swear, if you guys lock in Yumi, I will be very, very angry. They're already on Nautilus. You think it's going to be Yumi top? I don't know, but if there is a Yumi there, I will be angry. I think we've avoided the Yumi. I think we're just waiting on top for Saints. But hey, we have our last two picks for Harrisburg now. Speaking of Cassante, with no Gwen in sight, we're going to see Cassante picking that one up. Hmm. Now, what do they have? Their support? And oh, it's going to be Alistar. Jinx Alistar, okay. That's a, pretty, that's a pretty good one, honestly. You can use the headbutt to chain into the chompers or... You can use the chompers to set up for a headbutt, to set up for an insect. Uh, so many things you can do with the Alistair Jinx, which is awesome. Um, but here, the deal breaker is going to be that counter pick. The, ooh. Okay. You know what? <laughs> Viable. Viable. We've seen Ricky's Darius. It's really good, usually, with lethality. Uh, but one of the biggest things is Darius at level one has more armor penetration with his grab than an ADC with a Last Whisper. Okay, that's pretty That's pretty good. That is pretty good. So at <laughs> level 3, that Cassante ain't that tanky, trust me. Uh, but okay. one of the biggest factors is Cassante makes himself very strong when he ults, right? Mm -hmm. But he halves his health, or almost. He loses like 35% of his max health. Uh, but Darius has an Execute, right? So it's canonized, but sorry, it's done in execute because it doesn't deal missing health damage. Now, what I would have loved to see against a Cassante is a Garen. Oh, that would that would have been all right, but Garen is busted against Cassante. Oh yeah, yeah. I thought missing you meant health damage the when he screams. Yeah, because you literally so he ults you, you press Q E, maybe W and alt. <laughs> and where did the Cassante go? That's true. That's true. So yeah, uh, from that standpoint. Darius is I. It's, it's all right. All right. There, there might have been a better pick, but then again, Darius is a little bit better in those team fights than uh, Garen. So, oh, before I give my take, what's your overall pick over these comps? You know, looking at what they're trying to do here, what's the overall ideas, and what do you think is going to have the edge in what they're trying to do here? All right. Call it whack, but the Saints are at a little bit of a disadvantage given the fact that Ari is their only AP. Uh, so if they do end up with a scenario where, uh, Bakery Boy is behind, it's not going to be fun, <laughs> but there is 
counterplay. Like mm. it is, it's definitely winnable for both teams. I'm not saying that the Saints are absolutely in the gutter. It's playable. It's just that damage split that I'm not too confident with, uh, at least for the uh, the Saints. On the flip side, you have a Jinx. We have everybody knows Jinx's weaknesses. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Dive bot tower. I mean, Jinx. Why? No. Any ADC, no matter what point in the game, just dive them in fountain. I yeah. mean, like Easy it's minute play. three. Might as well dive the fountain. You know what I mean? I know. I know what you mean. But we also have to correct the record. We did say this is uh, best of five, when actually this is just yes. a best of three. So this is going to be Saints on the winning point right now to potentially go to Orlando. So I think they're going to be playing their best right here. You want that fun trip down there? Maybe even <laughs> see some Disney World, see some crocodiles. You know, there's a lot to do down there. I don't know. I'm not a. I don't know. It's like. Yeah, okay, you get to head to Florida, but, like, it's getting warm. Yeah, so, well, like, it's great. Beach time. No! It's warm! It's too warm! <laughs> like, I, I, I like staying in the north, where it's, like, a semi-tempered. Like, the, the, the weather's I like, yeah. around here. And, like, even in Windsor, like, for me, it, mm -hmm. it gets warm really often, because I'm from a little bit more towards the north. So, like, I, we didn't have any snow. I'm used to, like, having about me hot, tall snow mm -hmm. at some places. So... I'm not used to, like, heat this early on in the day, or, like, in the season. And now, like, heading to Florida, like, I wouldn't be able to do it. But I think the Saints will be able to do it. We're going to throw it to a quick break, and we'll be right in game two, potentially the final game. So we'll see you after a, qu after a quick break.
And here we are in TFT. Things are rolling about here. We're looking at Naku Taigen's POV right now. Now we're just before any of the big fights right now. Still in the picking phase, but it looks like we have a lot of picks on the board so far. Yep, seems to be going for an Umbral Bruiser comp right now in this early game. A uh, pretty interesting choice, all things considered. I'm not familiar with the uh, the new stuff that they added in the patch because it's completely new. It is right? pretty brand new, yeah. It's maybe so, a week or two old at most. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna see how this one goes. Uh, I'll do my best. Yeah, but it looks like Naku Taikin's looking pretty comfortable with the new set as he got a first clear here when he got his first fight. Wait, a loon? Yeah, Loon's a solo character. Uh, for those who don't know, Loon is Aphelios' sister who's, I think, dead? A ghost? No, okay, so let me give you the lore of League of Legends. <laughs> so, a Loon is in a temple on uh, the Umbral Plane. Okay. Basically where Yumi is, but we okay. don't talk about Yumi. So, a Loon is in a temple. Um, and all she can do to help Aphelios is create weapons for him. I see. So she's in his head all the time <laughs> and gives him weapons. And Aphelios is just kind of like, okay, cool. So I have my sister as a stalker now, but she's giving me guns. So like, I can't complain. <laughs> and for those who might be wondering where the league game is, you know, Riot, you know the Riot client. Rito. It's not working out too well, so we're trying to get that solved before we can get in the game. But while we wait, we're going to peer in at this TFT game. And of course, if you want to just focus in on one stream, you can do exclamation mark streams in the chat. Pull up all the streams, stay up to date on whatever game you want to specifically follow. But hey, right now we're looking at TFT here on the mainstream as League isn't ready yet. Your team gains 4% bonus damage plus more based on your level. Ooh, that actually sounds pretty cool. Uh, I didn't. I still don't know what Umbral does, but he does seem to be going for quite a lot of those uh, if we're just looking at his uh, team manager thingy because he did have three at bare minimum. Might be more. Uh, yeah, I think three. Illuminates Hex's shielding units placed at them in the start of combat. Looks like it's shields. Oh. It's like a tankier shielding comp, and you need to place it on those umbral spaces. Interesting, interesting. That is... Okay, so like it's tankiness for your front line, which is alright, I guess. I guess we'll see how that one kind of plays out. Uh, biggest thing that I'd like to point out... Wait, Set is considered Moon? What? Yeah, he's umbral, and he probably is a bruiser as... Oh, no, he's not a bruiser. No, he's not a bruiser, which is whack, because he is a bruiser. Well, it's it's the Spirit Blossom world. You know, things are a little bit different here, so that's why those classifications are the way that they are. But nonetheless, Tommy looking to lose this round right here, which isn't great here. Win one, lose one. You want to at least get a streak going. Or looks like he actually lost a game while we were looking away. He's having a loss streak right now. Oh, yes, we were looking at his... Uh... <laughs> At his team comp planner thingy. Uh, but here at the carousel, we instantly go for a tier of the goddess looking to hover that archangel staff. Uh, so pretty interesting. I don't think there was any change to the items. So at least there's that that we have yep. consistency in invoker here hovering. Every three seconds, your units gain mana. That's not too bad if you have one of those uh, champions that just constantly spell casts. Well, I think mana in this... Uh, scenario is the, like the bar underneath your yeah that bar, charges which like up your, your which alt. allows you to do uh, yeah it's your like your a more powerful move yeah so if you have because you gain mana every time you auto attack which is whack because if you go at full attack speed you're also charging up whatever your mana ability is very fast yep. um, I, I usually just go like rage blade spear of sojin on an ADC and <laughs> uh, spear of sojin yeah I, oh yeah yeah spear of sojin it is Spear of Sojin. Yes. Yes. And just watch the magic happen. But we'll see how this one goes this time. As they are going on to the next one. Probably looking to keep that uh, Lost Streak up. Oh yeah, we're seeing those pretty big shields. And they, they last pretty long, actually. Yeah, I don't know if 
you could go for the Lost Streak strat. I think that's most likely. Oh yeah, that's definitely likely here, but you still want to just barely lose. You don't take too much damage in the early game, but it looks like a lot of damage is going to go his way. You lose is a lot. Is that Chibi Gwen? Health. I that is, is Chibi Soul Fighter Gwen. Yeah. We have a lot of little legends now. I forgot about that. I, I don't know how I forgot about that, but I forgot about that. I think the current, the newest one is Yone. Little Legend Yone. I think it's the last one I saw uh, on Twitter somewhere. So of course it's we'll Yone. It's always Yone. <laughs> it's, if it's not Yone, it's Yasuo. Oh my god. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's pretty, it's kind of whack because like Gwen is a relatively popular champion. Only two skins. Oh, you're, you're right. Yeah, it's like it's like Orn. Orn is played Space pretty Groove consistently. And Soul Fighter. Yeah. That's, That's it. That is a little whack. And Cafe Cutie. <laughs> Cafe oh, you're Cutie right. Went, okay, so yeah. three. She just Not got the bad. Soul Not Fighter bad. one. But, like, Orn also just got his, like... Which one was it? Third? With the uh, the train one? The Choo Choo train one? Yeah. yeah. It's it's whack how little skins really popular champions have. And then you have Lux on her 20th. And Yone on his 15th. And <laughs> Ezreal on his 30th. That's true. That's it's really like, okay, yeah, we get it. They sell, but like... Uh, then again, why am I complaining? It's not like I'm going to buy the skins anyway. That's true. That's <laughs> true. But speaking of Choo Choo Train, it's going to bring it back to the Orn here as he still is building Orn. It looks like for the Bruiser combat. Yeah. Does he have enough? I think he still wants more. But he is accruing quite the amount of gold right now. I think he just hit the limit of his coffers here. Yep. He's got at least 50 in the bank. Going to buy a few. Maybe even refresh one more time and see what he gets. Oh, no, he's going to buy one last duelist right there. Plus the Alawi. Now, who, what are they? But there's, oh, I thought that was Oh, my God, it's team. a scuttle. Watch out. The triple scuttle. This is this is a, a national level threat. Do not mess with the scuttles. You don't want to mess scuttles no sir but it looks like they're gonna come out on top once again and right now Tommy not having the best run not having the worst run I would say you know, yeah that sounds about right he's equal he's second last right now hopefully to get it get he's hoping to get his groove soon enough but if not that's not good that's, he's on a lost streak. He wants to turn this into a win streak soon enough. He has yeah. more than well, enough gold. To... Here's the thing. Look at his team planner. He's got mostly purple champions, right? Right now they're at 5%, so he probably wants to just level up as much as possible right now and scale. Just speaking yep, of, he's is. just spamming it. Yeah, there you go. He wants those levels. He wants that increased chance of getting those purples so that he can eventually get those characters that he's looking for. Playing for the late game. Yeah, exactly. So he just needs to make sure he doesn't take too much damage or that he can scale up fast enough so that he doesn't, you know, get curb stomped in the late game yep. too. And speaking of curb stomp, no offense to Nakutaikin, but he has lost another round. Continuing the lost streak, getting the max amount of lost streak that he can Wait, get. Wait, there's two chibi guns. Hey, it must be popular. Uh, yeah, I mean, dude, as it's I said, Gwen is a popular champion. This cute little doll on your team. Who wouldn't want to have a cute little doll cheering you on, you on through the finals? I mean, this one's finals. snipping you away, but... Nah. <laughs> it's almost Snip the it away thing. the competition. Exactly. Yeah, there you go. Uh, ooh, okay. What are these augments? Interesting. Gain random a random list. item component. At the start of the next six rounds, he just rerolled the other one. Tiniest Titan. Player gains two health and one gold after That's every... That's gonna be it. Death? Was that... I think so. I think so. It was a little fast to read the whole thing, but I'm going to assume that you got that one in the bag. I don't know. I'm not a fast reader. Well, we it's Darius. Whack. Wait, Darius? You got what? Darius tier two. Oh, okay. He also has the Nautilus. Is he looking for the Volley Bear? Oh, Is he, he looking get... for the Yone? No. He needs the set. Yeah, he needs that set. All right, the boss is here. Uh... Oh, he's put him in. What? What the? <laughs> he just, he just. <laughs> Bro is just lifting both Aatrox and Tom Kench. Okay. That's a that's a funny. I wish that you could do that in the game with your teammates and, and just the, carry your teammates. Yeah, just quite for, literally. Just for an emote, you know. We have a few. I mean, he already has his sit-ups. What would be that's funny true. is if they could like inter like make their 
uh, like some emotes have like other aspects to them. Like you know how like Samira has hers that does one true damage, right? With the coin. Mm -hmm. Like what if, right? And hear me out with this one. You have an emote for like set where he's doing a workout, but instead, like every time he does a sit up, he gains um, like I don't know, a, uh, not a tenth, like a, a one hundredth of an AD. Mm -hmm. You know, like it ain't much, but it is AD. Every one hundred steps, if you get one, one AD. AD. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That'd be good. Well, then the meta could just be sit under tower, spam it. Sit ups. <laughs> No, no, you have, have to do like the thousand. full setup, not the oh, spam. Okay, okay, okay. No, 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 you're not spamming that button a hundred times because then you could just like macro that. You they, know? they made, uh, I think the Spirit Blossom said he does a uh, barbell. Yeah, spots. he has he has barbells. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that and that one's fun to spam. They even want to spam all emo. But hey, just to update everybody uh, still listening in on this stream. Unfortunately, League of Legends unable to be spectated. We love Riot, and uh, if this does go to a game three, maybe we'll be able to fix it then. But if the Saints end up winning it, congrats to them. They're going to Orlando. Yep. So it's gonna be interesting to see how that one uh, plays out. Hopefully, we will get updated soon. Uh, I swear, Riot needs to fix their client. They're not gonna do it, but they should. It 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 would be very appreciated. Riot, if you're watching this, John Riot, uh, please fix your client. It would be very appreciated. Unless it's the technical difficulties we were having last time. If you remember those. I do remember those. Because that it could just be the computer being problematic. So there's a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. You know what I mean? Uh, but speaking of columns here, we are going into a single file column at the carousel here. Uh, seeing what he's going to pick out. Gonna instantly pick out that Nautilus with the Tier of the Goddess again. Uh, I mean, he's got one Tier 1, two Tier 1s. He only needs one more, and that's a Tier 2 Nautilus uh, ready to go. So, not a bad call there. Gonna want to see... He's looking for that, uh, that Silas, it would seem. You think he can find it in a timely manner? I think he will. I think he will. I believe in Nakatekin's luck here. He had to really dig deep into these coffers to try and get things going. So I think it might all be worth it. But time will tell. Wait, what is that thing that you just sold? No idea. It looked like a little spider? A little monster? Maybe. Hmm. Anyways. Well, looking at the board, Pitsy on fire. 100, not even losing a oh, single match yet. That's bad. That's very bad. This is bad for Nakutaikin. Yeah, if you if you 100 this late into the game, it's because you got a really good team composition, so he's probably not going to fall out of power from there, but hey, well, there's always a, a comeback ammo. What? Pitsy's on the Saints team, so that's that's good for, for us as a college. Well, yeah, it's not good for <laughs> Nakutaikin. Oh, not great, but it's his teammate. If there's anyone you want on the top, it's going to be your teammate. Fair enough, fair enough. But uh, going forward, this match is going to be another loss for Naku Taiken, unfortunately. And he's just unable to get the ball rolling here. Well, I mean, he's he's trying. He's scaling, but he's, yeah. not, he's not scaling, scaling, you know? He's, uh, he's trying. He's trying and not succeeding, but... Oh, wait, actually. This, oh, wait. This Pitsy is just took damage. Ooh, Kaze okay. causes XP to... Couldn't read it. It's one of those new events that they're having. It's like a Mario Party event, I think. Oh, yeah, those. A new effect has come into play. Couldn't quite get the full read there, but it has to do with XP, it seemed. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Maybe it's like bonus experience. I don't know. Kha'Zix in Standard League doesn't really have any... Any actual substance in terms of... Uh, XP buffs, like if it be Nyla, it makes sense, right? But Kha'Zix, really? The bug? <laughs> Kha'Zix? Like, all I know from him is get stick bugged. That, that's literally, that's it. Yeah, I hide in a bush and then you get jump scare stick bugged. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but going back to TFT, Nakutaika needs a win under his belt and soon. Lost bonus did get reset. He got one win somewhere in there. But will this be one be another? It's looking pretty close for him. He gets one. Oh, he can't take down this tank, though. I can't see. It's under his seal. I think it's Tom Kench there. He's giving yep. a lot of trouble. 
Just being an that is uh, a thick boy. Very, very thick. Oh, it's that redemption. The redemption is just healing him for more than his backline is dealing damage. So, yep, that'll wow. uh, that 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 sucks. That sucks to deal with. Yeah. Unfortunate. Healing uh, healing front lines are not fun to deal with. But uh, he's gonna have to deal with it, unfortunately. More scuttles on the chopping block here. Uh, those are some interesting look at. Are those stealthed? The scuttle is stealthed. Okay. <laughs> sure, why not? Why not? I fear the day that scuttle will be allowed to auto attack. That day will be truly horrifying. That day we're gonna get scuttle as a champion. I mean, he already is. <laughs> I mean, Scuttle's basically Faker at this point. <laughs> like, uh, he's so good. Oh my god. Wow. Okay, set alt for no reason onto the Scuttle. That's sure. a lot of items right there. Yep, and they're not being used, they're so he's cooking something. Oh, never mind. Oh, they're gonna be used. Blue buff on the. What is that? Is that a. I think that's a loon? Maybe? Wait, hold on. I just realized. You know how the uh, TFT is opened through the Riot Client? Yes. It's because it's probably because the Riot Client has like the quote-unquote access to all the like skins, the has meshes the assets, for characters. Yeah. yeah, all the assets. So that means that somewhere in the files, a loon exists. Exactly. That people are rumoring that as a character now. No, 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 no. not a loon as a character. What is? Oh. What is going on here? Are we? Well, okay, that was funny. Uh, I think that was the... That, that was the league team. I think we were trying to get someone in there with a camera to maybe record the screen, but... Yeah, screen record. Screen uh, peeking. I wasn't informed of that. Nope. That, I was, was, that was a nice little jump scare right there. Yep. Uh, and the stream ended also. We went to the stream and it ended. Yep. That was, uh, that was whack. Uh, but yeah, like if a loon has uh, a mesh, right, an asset in the league files, that means that people could probably take that and turn it into an FLEO skin. You could just play a loon. Instead of having to have a loon in your head all the time, you could just play a loon. That'd be interesting. Let's get an loon skin on for Aphelios. Just the, the Alun yeah. skin. <laughs> you know what? Just abandon just the middleman. Just walk out of the temple, like, forehead. <laughs> so oh. the chat said they did design a loon for the new set designed from the ground up. I'm sure they did, but now that they have it, no, you could use it somewhere else, maybe. <laughs> I mean, the asset is there. You can use it. Modders are going to have fun oh until Vanguard well, shows up. Well, even Riot could just use it. They could just oh, yeah, they could. something else, make a new character. Well, it, it, it's kind of the same situation as KDA Lilia. They made oh, that yeah. skin, right? And I, like, I explained it. If it gets turned into a mod, then you have another one of those problems. And... I think that's another one of the reasons why Riot is introducing Vanguard, because Vanguard is not going to be friendly to mods, which kind of sucks because Spin, uh, Spin, Skin Spotlight, you know the guys mm -hmm. that spotlight the skins? Yes. The only way you can see the skins in yeah. the game. <laughs> uh, he uses mods to display sense. skins. So, oh, Sorry, how's that going to work? Fight. It's looking not... Like, it's gonna go, knock the oh away once again. And he's at max loss bonus, and I think he only has one more fight left in him to lose. Well, all you need is a few good fights, and you're back in the game. Well, I mean, not really, but... All he needs to do is not die. You know, it's like telling your ADC not to die to the dive. Like, exactly. duh, just, just don't play get safe. hit, and you won't die. Yeah, just, just play just safe. Don't get hit. But, uh, unfortunately, TFT is not a game of not getting hit. It's just a game of... Yeah, they don't have towers losing. in TFT. <laughs> There's no way to dodge. No way. Tower? Introducing a new character to TFT? The let's tower? Let's introduce Nexus as a character. <laughs> but, uh, Literally just the Nexus. I saw a mod of that where it had laser beams. It was overpowered, but it was funny. But uh, <laughs> anyways, going back to the game. Naku Tykin's life is on the line right here. He needs to win this game or else he is knocked out of the grand finals right here. Of course, there's more games on the way, but you don't want to be starting in last place if you're here in the grand finals. This Volley Bear going crazy, has so much sustain. It's staying alive, just picking away his tank. 
Don't worry, one guys. More tank. Least tanky volley there. <laughs> Look at this health regen. <laughs> Will he be able to take it down with two backlines and a tank? Oh, jeez. Well, okay. This there's a Yana. Down. Yana is not exactly a backline, but wait, what? Oh, is he that? did it. He What's took... the other one? I think it might be Caitlyn. That a Caitlyn? Nah, it builds AP. Oh. It's not a Caitlyn. Maybe it's like a Huawei. Wait, no, a Hui. <laughs> no Hui. It's a Hui. Not a Huawei, that's a phone. No way you just said that, but... No. <laughs> anyway. You did not just make that joke. <laughs> you did not just make that joke. There's no way I made that joke. Anyways, <laughs> we're going to move back on. Nakutaikin still in it. He could maybe advance in the ranks if he can take down... I believe that's Robe in second last, just above him, tied for health. They're probably going to be facing off very soon. Ooh, introduces the Azir. All right, let's see the Shurima shuffle. Is it going to be good? You think it's going to be good? This, the, wait, hold on. The real question. Do you think the Azir actually has the ability to do a Shurima shuffle? We'll see. In TFT? We'll It'd see. be pretty cool. I'm going to guess no, but I'm willing to be proven wrong. Fair enough, fair enough. I would like to see it, though. Oh, no, he can't oh, buy no, the set. the set is there. To be fair, I think he's going for a late game... Uh, um, whatever his DPS is right now. What is that? I don't know. Is it a loon? That is a loon. That's a loon. Those were Severums coming out. Oh. That oh, wait, no, that's Irelia. Oh. Unless I'm... Those are Irelia blades flying around. I think a loon's on the back lane, right? That floating person dancing on the moon. I mean, I've never seen anybody like that, so yeah, that could be a loon. But hey, Tommy wins, and he's still in it. He's w taking a streak now. Staying well. alive. Staying alive. Robe isn't knocked out. No one has been knocked out just yet. Everybody's still in this game. And Pitsy actually losing quite a few matches from last we checked in on him. Now at 77, still firmly in the lead, but taking a lot of damage in that span of time. Yeah, and he just has one gold in his pockets. Not much to play with here. That Alune is going to be uh, necessary. And uh, he's going to need to do a lot of damage with her. But I don't know how how all this one's going to go. I mean, do you think he can, he can get through that front line? I think he will breach this front line. It's going not great. Never mind. I retract my statement. He's having a little bit of a rough time breaking through this front line. Nautilus on the back line, though, getting a knock up. He might be able to turn this one around. They get the tank. Just one more straggler. Oh. And he does not win it in that. Oh, he been. lives! Bring me brought down to 3 HP. Yeah, that is a loon. All right. We have, we have official confirmation that is a loon. Rain with down uh, meteors. Meteors? Yeah. Why does she give guns a Felios if she can just pull an Aesol ult out of nowhere? Well, she's like giving little brother the hand-me-downs, you know? Oh, <laughs> I see. Okay, and what are you using the meteors for, Loon? You're in a temple. Just a, Like, yeah. come on, what are you doing? Actually, never mind. She lives in the same area as Yumi. Never mind. <laughs> just all those meteors are hitting Yumi. A hundred percent. That is not, canon Not now. if she's attached to another champ. <laughs> They're not going to be hitting. <laughs> but, oh, Yumi, please. But anyways, looking back over at the CFT game, we're in a farming round. Tommy going to be in it just a little bit more. We're getting, I think, two health. I think. He let's go. Play. We got the tier three Alun. Alrighty, let's see how uh, this tier three Alun plays out. What well, What are your expectations? Ooh. I think it's going to be good, but I don't know if it's going to be good enough to help him win against one of the best of the best it's up here. I mean, we are watching the best of the past right now. I know, but I just mean in the <laughs> rankings right now, if he goes up against one of these uh, people with more health, I don't think things are looking great. But if he goes up against Robe, I think he might be able to eliminate Robe and go just a little bit further. Well, oh, he is. Robe is his opponent. Wait, that's a Chibi Sona. Oh, no. Well, now I have a bias. <laughs> I like, ah, I'm fine with whoever wins. There's a Chibi Sona. It's fine. And Whoever wins, wins. It's looking like Nakutaken is going to take this one, but he is getting a little bit worse for wear up on the front line. Actually, Rope might be able to win this one. We win it's this? all down to the Loon. Loon, a lot of health. Tier 3 just has to deal with one more. Nope. Oh. So Dalty coming out. 
and a great boom. dragon will spell doom for Naku Taikin as he is eliminated from the first game of Grand Finals. And now Pitsy also falling from the first place position now over second place. Does get a tier two Annie though, so uh, point click stuns, I guess? I don't know what Annie does in uh, TFT. I don't know, it changes update per update, am I wrong? No, you're not wrong. I mean, they not, not massively, like, but well, like it's because they always shred certain champions that have niches. Like if you see Jin in TFT, you cannot consistently say, "Yeah, his fourth shot is actually going to deal more damage." Like sometimes Jin just isn't Jin in TFT, right? So like that can happen to every champion, uh, mainly the ones that have a niche. Like I wouldn't be surprised if Kindred couldn't defy death because you know they are death. Yep. But uh, we'll see how this one goes. Lots of AoE coming through though in this fight. Oh, the Huawei alt. Going to come through here. Pretty interesting, but doesn't deal as much damage as usual. Uh, and sorry to interrupt, this just in a little bit of an update for people who aren't reading chat. It looks like League of Legends did qualify to go to Florida, winning that game 2-0. So congrats to everybody on Ooh. the league team for winning that one out. I heard it was one heck of a game. Seemed like a lot of ups, a lot of downs. They managed to close out in the end. Nautilus grants you gold on enemy kill or ally death. Lasts three rounds. Oh. On ally death? Wait, what? Oh, like if you kill uh, an enemy unit. Okay, I get yes. it. I get it. Okay. I was gonna say, like, there's no allies. This is a free-for-all. It's TFT. Um, but yeah, no, that that, that that makes a lot more sense. I mean, yeah. Hmm. But I don't think that's gonna change too much. That's just the passive. That thing's gonna happen and inevitably just more yeah. more flowing around. There's no, like, strategy behind it. Yeah, you can't really plan around it. Just, just, just keep on playing. Rip and tear, you know? Yep. <laughs> and that they will do. Yep, here on the team planner, we're maybe seeing a new strategy being developed uh, for the next game, you know, bring that experience that you've already had uh, onto what you might need to build in the future. That Yorick, I, did we even see the Yorick this game? I don't think we did. I don't think we did. It's uh, kind of a whack one, but all right. Uh, the Aatrox. We didn't see too much. We saw it, but like it wasn't doing much. Alun was really the star of the show. Maybe my thoughts here. He just wanted to see what Alun did. <laughs> Maybe I'm sure he knows. He's already in the grand finals. I'm sure he had enough good time point. to practice. Good point. But I think Alun was a good pick, but just didn't come early enough. Yeah, that is true. Well, Alun is blue, right? Like she's relatively rare. She doesn't come instantly, so. Especially if it's a popular pick as well, you're even gonna have a harder time. Yeah, well, she wasn't picked. Like, he. There was no other Alun, right? Mainly that she only has two effects instead of three, right? Well, I mean, most have two, but, like, the ones with three usually get picked out a whole lot more because they have more effects. They're more compatible with uh, more comps. But yeah, the Umbral is. It's interesting. Umbral units in Illuminated Hexes execute based on i th believe it was missing health or uh current health no current or max well he's clearing his board as unfortunately not gonna be utilizing that on akutaken's side let's take a look at pitsy's board Art artist and great and spirit walker both being i think five star rarity traits uh, yes, that does seem like it. Spirit Walker would be from the, uh, is that a set? I believe that's a set. Uh, artist, I mean. That's way. Yeah. No, it's Jin. Is it? <laughs> There's oh, two I guess Jin. they both are. <laughs> yeah, they're, they both are. Just, oh, one's, one's a little more gruesome than the other one. One's a performance artist, one is a traditional artist. We'll put it that way. Yeah, the performance is one way to put it. <laughs> But it looks uh, like Pitsy gonna not take, oh yes, take this one in a landslide victory and continue to just dominate the board. Yep, and uh, we have a little chub here is uh, on fire. They're looking really, really good right now for this first game. So it's gonna be interesting to see how this one develops, see if they can hold that lead. Or... For sure. If they fall. Because 
My Pitsy is keeping up, right? Pitsy so is keeping pace, but yeah. a lot of people are falling off now, and he's just going to have to face out against a little chub. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, 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 I know. The other thing that I wanted to mention was both Chibi Soul Fighter Gwens have been one right next to the other this whole game. Hey, maybe they're buds. Maybe they're a team. You never know. But like, how do you coordinate that? I don't think you do. I, I think that was just RNG's, Jesus, to be honest. I think it is. Now they're gonna be a big. There's gonna be a big brawl right here between. What name is that? Fizuken and Pitsy, but Pitsy gonna win once again. Looking to take second place so far, maybe even first, if they get the build they need. Wait, is that a new Jana skin? Yeah, that's a that's Jana skin. It is. It's Heaven Scale Jana. Heaven Scale. It's, I'm not familiar. It came out with Smolder. It was Smolder's launch skin. It is. Oh god, I got PTSD from Smolder. <laughs> <laughs> no, not that dragon. It's like uh, that dragony aesthetic, a little yeah. bit of uh, Eastern influence there, especially in the outfits. But I, I, I like it. It's, uh, no, it's a good skin. It, it just looks good. I just I saw Yana and I'm like, I don't remember that skin being a thing. But uh, not surprising. I haven't been playing League enough. Wait, hold on. That's a good thing, not a bad thing. Hey, you gotta be living life here. But hey, <laughs> the life we're living right now is Pitsy's as he is cruising right now. I don't think he lost that match, but. I mean, he did, didn't, didn't really seem to care about it too much. What we're <laughs> He's confident. Right, what we're seeing right now is Naku Taiken planning for the next game, I believe. Yep, he is planning for the next game. He's uh, he, he planning with malicious intent. He's, he's yeah, got a plan, and maybe he will execute it. We'll, we'll, we'll have to see. And once again, opting for a very expensive pick. Lots of greens, only one gray. I believe Alun is... The only blue. Two I, golds. To be fair, that's a whole lot better than purples. Because he had all like almost that's all purples true. last time, right? So it's a lot cheaper. Uh, but here, we've got Pixie fighting against one of the Soul Fighter Gwens. Uh, I, I don't think this Gwen is going to last. Uh, Gwen is not going to be immune for this one. I, I, I don't I, think so either. No yeah. spell immune this time. As this is Pitsy looking to deal the killing blow, potentially. This one's going on quite a while, but not long enough for this Gwen. Oh! Oh, wait. It's close. Oh! Oh, it wow. is! We were completely wrong. Gwen lives. Well, okay, the other Gwen died. Ah. Uh, so, like, I was technically right, but. Wrong board. Yeah, wrong board. Right observation. Wrong I, I was board. looking at the minimap, guys. Don't worry. Don't worry. The minimap, yep. I 100% I knew that uh, it was that fight specifically, not the one that Pitsy was in. Uh, but yeah, we're in the top three now. Uh, Pitsy with, what is that, 49 health? 39 health? 39. Okay. 53 uh, is the next biggest one mm. on Little Chub there. And that is intimidating for anybody. It is pretty intimidating, but note that nobody is on a streak right now. This is it, Little Chub v Pitsy. Let's see who takes this one. Looks like this is going a Little Chub's way so far. But with so many particle, particle effects, it's hard to say for sure. You can see anything? And now, I think this is gonna be Pitsy Wait, did... taking this one? Maybe? I don't know. It's hard to tell. It's down to two v two. Wait, wait, wait. Why is there a teapot? Why was Cho'Gath teapotified? Oh no, little chub gonna take the win. Cho'Gath was teapotified. What? That's TFT. It's zany. It's wacky, but we are embracing it here today. And now, there's just one more HP left for Popcorn Par. And I wonder who's gonna be the one. To seal his fate. I don't know, but I'm hungry for popcorn now. Me too. We should get a popcorn machine in here. Mm -hmm. Be a good investment for the Nexus, but not a bad investment. Speaking yeah. of investments, Pitsy investing all twenty, all his money for this next round. I think he Fury is going up against the Little Chub once again, and that is going to be the case. We'll see if those lack last second investments will pay off. 
Yeah, hopefully they do because this is pretty much uh, live or die. Speaking of dying, somebody's dying a lot. Holy smokes, look at all that AoE going off. There is a lot of damage going around, but actually, surprisingly, not that much dying. Uh, wait. Huh? Am I really seeing this? Oh, wow. Pitsy brought down to nine? Nine, nine. HP. Well, wow, a little chub. 36. Three players still remaining in the game. And we move on to the carousel, too. Yeah, Popcorn Par still in this. Could maybe do some work here. Guess the Deathblade. Interesting. Interesting. All the one Pitsy was going for got yoinked by a little chub at the last second. Just gonna Yikes. go for this pick instead. Goes for this, uh, the Ravidon's death cap. Does he really have that much AP that it's worth it? I think he maybe even needed that unit as he just got two tier threes. Oh. Maybe not. Maybe that was from the last round where he bought a bunch before. But now, this next fight, things could have changed between last round and now. I think Popcorn Par should be his next opponent. And I think Pitsy should be able to win that. Yep, it'll be interesting to see how this one develops. But this duel is... Hey, look, it's a Mickey Mouse. <laughs> that certainly is. <laughs> Why do I think of these things? No, you're fine. You're fine. I just couldn't quite <laughs> see the Mickey Mouse myself, so... Disappointed, I can't see it. Well, it was the, it was the portal plus the two oh, augmented Oh, I hexes. see, I see. And it now, just... what I am seeing is Pitsy looking to win this one. Maybe? But will it be close? I think Pitsy lost the last time these two faced off. We'll see. It's pretty close. Way taking him down. It's just two of you one now. And yes, Pitsy going to eliminate Popcorn Par. Earning well, himself second place at least here. There and goes the win. Little Chubb at 18. Oh, wow. So if Pitsy can win this one, he can very well even the board. He could. There's a chance. But, uh... Ooh. His opponent is very threatening. And his opponent still has a lot of money left on the board. Ah. So now with Pitsy going in, this is looking to be the final fight here in TFT, at least for game one. Will Pitsy take this one, or will it be Little Chubb taking the crown? If you had to guess, put your guess in now, Gabe. I'd say Little Chubb. All right, I will go with Pitsy. So we have each have a dog in this race. And now, wait, is see. it a dog or a horse? I never remembered the expression. Uh, it could be either. But hey, no, fair Little enough. Chubb. Did Little Chubb not win that one? Sorry, we have why, to why? see. That one was over before it began, I feel. Pitsy won! Wow, I think we might have gotten a little bit of a disconnect at the last second, or maybe like an FF from the opponent. So it would And seem, now, yeah. props to Pitsy for taking the number one spot. I thought it was going to go to Little Chubb there. Same here. I mean, he had more health. The team comp seemed better, but like, convenience, I guess. Just yeah. I think one. I think the changes Pitsy made there at the end were just pushing him over the edge there. He's always in the leading position for most of that game. Little Chubb had his run as well, but congrats to Pitsy for taking game one. But we have more games on the way. But but before we get into that, we also have Omega Strikers. That's going to be starting off Ooh, yes. in another half hour Starts or so. at nine, right? Yeah, another half hour. What so. time is it? I would say, let's see. I don't see. have a watch. 8 46. So 15 Ooh, okay. minutes 15 or so. Minutes. We'll okay. be seeing Omega bad. Strikers grand finals. They've never lost a match. And... I expect a stomp. Neither have Pitsy. But, <laughs> I'm kidding. So we'll see if the flawless streaks will keep on coming from the Saints after a quick break. We'll see you soon, everybody.
Hello, and we're right back in the swing of things for TFT. We haven't missed any fights just yet. We just missed the first initial builds, but it looks like Tommy Nakutaikin is going for the same old, same old that we saw in the last game. The Bruiser Umbral build is looking to be what he's going for today. Yep, it's going to be interesting to see how this one goes. Uh, I wonder what build he's going to be going for this time. Is he going to be like a, a Naloon type build? I, I, I don't know. What do you think? I, I think he's an Elune Stan. I think we're going to see Elune once again. Seems to be the thing that ties the whole build together. Elune seems to be very strong, especially once he hit that tier 3. Elune was chunking away at people. That's when he started getting a little bit of his wins here. But I think, I think he wants to have a little bit of a stronger early game. Because he definitely so, like, was like, I'll take the loss bonus. I'll, you know. Yeah. And then it didn't quite turn around in time. Like maybe like a, a, an any percent Elune speedrun? That's, that's what we're hoping for. But... It looks like he actually might be doing something a little bit different. Still going for that bruiser to start, but being a little bit more flexible to the to the mid game. Hmm. All right. Fair enough. That is one thing I don't think I've ever seen a uh, uh, an iteration of TFT where bruiser wasn't a class. It's just Probably always the there. Ones, yeah. And like you can stuff pretty much any champion in that. Well, okay. No, sorry. You can't stuff any champion into the bruiser class, but like there's so many Good majority. That like yeah like oh okay yeah today we decided that Yone is no longer an assassin he is now a bruiser you know <laughs> yeah. like you could just do that because well okay Yone is a bruiser an assassin a diver a uh, an ADC and well all of the above uh but oh wait hold on let's look at this comp here yeah. we've got Rivignana Zyra Siver hmm interesting interesting I don't quite know their labels necessarily but we'll see them soon enough as they start appearing on the border reaper seems to be the build so far a reaper so maybe like an assassin style build i don't know or lethality kind of thing i don't know <laughs> what would a reaper do let's see if story weaver summons a hero summons a hero oh god seems like he's going for a story weaver which is that irelia which is if, correct me if i'm wrong yeah, really, where the blades spin and spin and spin on the yeah, screen. They just, like, go around and hit everybody, you know. Yeah, everybody gets their turn getting sliced by the Irelia blades. Just take some time, you know. <laughs> just wait in the single file line. Exactly. But um, maybe not. We're seeing a few different builds come out from Nakutaiken. We're still in the early, early game. But I like what I'm seeing from him. He's being a lot more flexible in his game plan. Before, he was really dead set that umbral idea and it was very strong but i don't think it was strong enough to maybe go on that loss streak for so long yeah for sure so here we're gonna see something a little bit different the wukong may be looking to be an option the udir or you know what i think he's just picking his stuff to see what their traits do maybe that's what he's doing uh, he knows what the traits do i think he's just having maybe an i uh, a more realistic comp and then that might be his ideal comp where he has five Oh, Five yeah, stars, yeah. and it, the, the luck lines up just right. I think that might be what he's doing right here. Yeah, when the stars align. Let's, that's that's really rare, though. Okay, so he's Bruiser, Dryad. Dryad? Wait, what? And a Reaper. Dryad is the thing? D-R-Y-A-D. So I'm going to say that's Dryad. As in, like, uh, huh? <laughs> I'm not quite sure what a Dryad is. What? Anyways. A, a dryad is a, uh, a, 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 a words are hard. Hold on. Uh, dryads are a form of like, I guess, humanized uh, plants. Yeah, they're like Zyra, basically, except yeah. more like plant, nature, less Zyra. Or nature spirit. Yeah, they're, they're yeah they're nature spirits exactly. So like, what is a nature spirit other than Zyra? That you you're. 100% right, but who else fits that description? I, okay, wait, hold on. Maybe Nico. Maybe Nico. Because, like, Nico can turn into anything. Maybe Lilia. I mean, what does Lilia do, though? She just Nature makes spirit. you go sleepy time. <laughs> Nature spirit. Kind is she, of. Is she, is she really considered that? <laughs> no, maybe, but maybe under the TFT. I'm trying to see which champs would fit under that umbrella. Well, because this is Shanghai Scroll, Lilia, the skin. Oh, you're right. So it makes no sense. Not. And even then, if you just take base Lilia, base Lilia is like a... Oh. a but actually, base Lilia is a child from a tree, so technically... Kindred. Yeah, Spear Blossom Kindred is a dryad, apparently, here. And a reaper, and fated. 
Like, Kindred? Yes. Is a Dryad? Under TFT guidelines, yes. Oh my god, my brain hurts. Hey, sometimes you just... Sometimes probably the guy planning this was like, Alright, we need to put some more under the Dryad. All we had was one or two champs, and this isn't strong enough to warrant that. We need oh, a boy. few more under that line. And they just took what they could. It's Spirit Blossom Kindred. Yes. But it's... Dr How does that make any sense? I wouldn't look too closely into it. I think this is just TFT, you know? TFT does TFT things. It's wacky. It's wild. All boundaries are crossed in TFT. Speaking of stuff being crossed... <laughs> that Malphite is just <laughs> hitting the Kindred, and Kindred just doesn't care. <laughs> Nakutai can kind of cross up his first enemy there. Taking a win, taking a loss, but ending on a win, which is important. Starting that win. Is that... Nami or Yana? Yana gives you the choice between different champions. Two one-star cost unit, two random two-cost champions, Ooh. or a three-cost unit. What What did he pick? Uh, two two two-cost units. The middle one. The second one, I said. Our, okay. I believe that was the two two-cost units. Oh, okie dokie. So let's see this one. Uh, so the team composition is Faded... Bruiser Dryad. Yeah, I still don't know what that does. Do you think? We'll see. No? We'll oh, see. Okay. Oh, now he's looking at a loon again. <laughs> I mean, like he, he wants the loon. <laughs> he wants the loon. I mean, to be fair, like yeah. it's 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 new. It's special. It's like Kitty Lilia. Yeah. You see it? It looks kind of neat, but like you know, you probably shouldn't. <laughs> you know. I, at the end of the day, though. Like, they should have a buff if both Aloon and Aphelios are on the same team. Thoughts? Yeah, I agree. Should like, uh... I think, uh, I think uh, Ezreal is under the Umbral class in TFT, so I think there is a little bit of synergy between the two characters. Wait. Well, hold on. Ezreal? No, uh... Aphelios. Aphelios. Yes. Yes, okay. I was, I, I was like, did I say that wrong? Did I, did I, like, say Ezreal instead of Aphelios? But no, okay. Just want to make sure... Um... But yeah, like, uh, I don't know. Or wait, actually, it could be a debuff, too, because, like, they're not used to being next to each other, so you'd just be, like, socially awkward. Like, man, Fighting you're your not in siblings. my head anymore. This is whack. <laughs> yeah, arguing with your sig siblings debuff. Oh, my God. That is, like, <laughs> just a minus 100 attention span to battle. True. <laughs> but, hey, maybe it's a buff. Maybe you get competitive and see how many enemies you can take down. Ah, uh, yes. Great bonding session. <laughs> Let's just go to war. Hey, war is where brothers are made, and it looks like Pitsy and Nagutaiken are brothers on the battlefield here today, as they are both neck and neck for this second place and third place position right now. Yep. Right next to each other, with Br Briar Patchy going to be up there. At Briar the Patchy? Hey, do yep. we have a Briar Enjoyer? Perhaps, or maybe that's just the name before Briar was in the game. Maybe, maybe. It's possible. I'm gonna assume it's a bio main. A good assumption, good assumption. <laughs> oh, alrighty, let's see how this fight goes. The economy is looking relatively high. I mean, okay, yeah. Now it's looking very good. Uh, at 50 economy. Doesn't really need to worry about too much. He's got that interest coming in. Yeah, he is looking pretty good. Now Pitsy and Nakutaken facing off. Who will win on the side of the Saints? This is the home field duel. And is that a Thresh in the Relatively front close. That is a Thresh on the front line. Spirit Blush from Thresh going to go down. It is a 2v3 for Nakutaken right now. Looking to take down Pitsy. Oh, the winner what last the? Game. He took one down. It is a 2v2. Looks like an Ari and a Peel. Oh, wow. That kind of damage. You saw that too, right? I saw that. That was... Great and props to Naku Taikin. Wait a minute! In second place. I just see that. No way. They have lamb, but they don't have wolf. It's not kindred without wolf. They just have the lamb. Really? Like that makes no sense. We've got life without death. Like what is that? Immortality? <laughs> uh, yes, actually, it is. What? It's a dryad, apparently. 
according to TFC. But uh, they still oh. have the Reaper roll, so a little bit of a balance there. And now, looking at the rest of Nakutaken's build, he's going to forego the Reaper and just continue on this bruiser and fated path. So it's not a triad anymore. We don't need to worry about wow. triads. He just or... dumps all his money to put one more thing on the on the stage here. Fair enough. I mean, well, not all. He dropped two levels of economy. Well, he was at 60. Half of his money. He was at 60. Oh, God. Big chunk. Big chunk of change invested right here. But hey, that might be what he needs to make it through this next bout. As we see, the Silver Bruiser tier might have been the upgrade that he needed to close this one out. As... He's just cruising on through. Gonna be He's on fire right now. A lot of damage to little Chubb. And yeah, he's on fire. Wonder what's going to happen though. Can he keep this lead, do you think? Yes. Is there, is there the, you think so? Yes. Okay, okay. I he did like, dump his economy. I still think he'll keep it. He spent half of it, still had three coffers left on the board. And I don't think he's gonna invest too much now. I think he's very confident going through this mid-game, at least until the next carousel. But one thing about Nakutek, and I think he really, once he's in the lead, he is cruising. He knows how to operate down there, but climbing back up is where he has the harder time. Yep. Well, I have to say, I have to respect the Sauna Sprite. It is by far one of the best, uh, one, one of the best characters you can have on TFT. When I play TFT, uh, Sauna Sprite was my, my was my go-to. It's mine as well. It was just, it's so good. It was good. It was a free one, if I don't... It was free? Yeah, I think it was free. It was a free in the battle pass. If you had oh. a certain rank, you get the Sauna Sprite. I, I, I knew I didn't pay for it, but I didn't know it was <laughs> free that way. It's like an event kind of thing. Oh, Had to I be see, there. Can't get it anywhere. Limited time. I, I got it for free somewhere. <laughs> Uh, anyways, you know it is going to be free this win for Pitsy. Yep, getting another one. Looking really good. Both the Saints in the lead right now. Yeah, Pitsy in that second place right now. Naku Taiken in a firm lead at 94, but no one doing what Pitsy did, being flawless in that top lane or top spot. With Welcome to the top lane, health. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, this is exactly what the top lane looks. Uh, if you if you guys were wondering when you're playing with you know your jungle and your ADC uh, in the bot lane, this is exactly what we top laners do while we farm because uh, it's it's an island. So <laughs> yeah, they have to play TF. That should be a mechanic. It should be TFT. Literally, just back. like challenge your opponent to TFT, and you can just play TFT instead of CS. <laughs> yeah, that's how you generate your gold is in TFT. You have to balance it, and you can, you can carry it over for the rest of the match. But that'd be a great little side game. Yep, just extra content for board top laners yep great but nonetheless we're gonna keep on keeping on here Akutaiken building up the coffers once again at 50 and not gonna shoot some vests still confident that this team will take him another win mm-hmm let's see how this one goes though all right he is selecting all the high tiers is it because he wants them, or is it because he's got an idea? Is he cooking, or is he, he boiling? He's put every single hide yep. there. Well, except for Set and Zaya. And who is that? Who? Where? That's one. I couldn't quite see, because we're not looking at five stars anymore. Exalted. Exalted. What, what champion says exalted? That the word sounds like it's said by a champion. But is that I... not Kaisa at the bottom there? Kaisa? Oh no, he just... Wait, he selected it. No, it's Rakan! Oh, it's Rakan. Oh, there's Zaya and Rakan and then Gold. Okay, so there's probably gonna be a buff for that one, because the Riot loves keeping the lovebirds together. Kha'Zix causes XP to cost three gold instead of four for the next three rounds. Evolve. Actually, that makes sense. Alright, now we, now we know how it works. I never thought that that would be what they did, but fair enough. Rapid evolution is Kha'Zix's game, it seems. Yep, although I don't know why he instantly dumped his economy. Wouldn't it have been better to hold on to his economy? Because it's for the next three rounds, right? 
Oh, like you're right. Four. You could have generated a little. So you could have generated more and invested. Like as long as he keeps to the five uh, to the fifty cap, right? Like he could have generated so much and more with since that. He took a loss. Maybe he would want to take another loss just to get that bonus going. But I think he wants to try and get this win, win streak back up as soon as he can. Yep, that is the other possibility. Here he is going up against uh, the person in last place. Who is that? Chovy, Cho Cho something something. Yeah, there's a little uh, scuffle we're happening right now. But there it is. Speaking of strikes, it looks like Nakutekin is going to deal one strike against his opponent right here. But there's more strikes on the way as Omega Strikers Grand Finals is Ooh. just about to start very soon here against Fanshawe. Is really? Oh, yeah, it's 909. Look at that. Yeah, time flies and we're having fun, but hey, I know they're going to be having fun over there in Omega Strikers. They are keeping their. 100% win rate in ECAC going. But Fanshawe is looking to be the King Slayers here to take them down. Yeah. Sure, I suit and available there on the goal. Well, Embered up there at oh. the front, leading the charge, being the striker for him, dashing in. Now, it's starting off relatively quick as we just saw an elimination come out from the side of the Saints. Now it is a 2v3 for Fanshawe. The Saints need to hit one more block to open up the net. And there it is. Net is open. And there it is. One more winning strike Ooh, for the Saints. Shiro Aisu taking the first point for the Saints. Yeah, Shiro. They are very good at the game. And uh, I like, to be fair, like, not to like, uh, I played a few games with them. And uh, they are very, very good. Like, extremely good. Yeah, sure, Aisu is. That's why they were in my team, not against me. That's why they won the MVP award at. Rock oh, yeah, they did. The banquet, so. Congrats. I have a bad memory. Yeah, sure, Aisu. <laughs> oh, that's fair, that's fair. It's been a while since then. Not really? It's States been like. Putting on the pressure. Actually, yeah, it has been a while. There's the black hole gone. We'll be close to that one. Oh. Now they're just trying to maneuver this one out. But Fanshawe has the net open and oh. is keeping up the pressure. But the Saints still in control, taking it down, looking to maybe close this one out. So many Very core flips coming save. out. Look at that. Three core flips came out in just one instance there. Oh, okay. It's really equal here. But I think the Saints might be able to... Oh, never mind. I cast a curse it. Hey, this is why it is the grand finals. It is 1-1 one, one currently here in the biggest triggers. Who will take this first oh. game, this first map? Saints still have not lost a single map, but that's not to say they've lost, haven't lost a single point. That'd be ridiculous. But now Fanshawe putting pressure on the Saints. Yep, Black Hole goes down. Uh, core Flip is available for Shiro, so they might be able to find something. The ultimate does come out, try and push that core a little bit along the way, but not going to achieve anything as their first defense does go down. So only one left on both sides. Shiro brought really, really low right now. So, not many options available. We're going to instantly push in. The core flip actually went down. Uh, so, Shiro not going to find any use out of that one. The second gate is open. And uh, they're going to have to deal with that. Goalie going to have to cover so much more terrain right now. But, no matter what happens, they just have to make sure that they can get it into the opponent's goal before they do very dicey right now and oh. now Fanshawe taking an unexpected lead right here yeah okay Fanshawe is doing really really well right now so we're gonna see like you know how I said it was gonna be a stomp I don't think that's gonna happen yet. yeah I don't think so either the Saints though still looking to even it up there's a minute left on the clock they can maybe bring this to overtime here Time is ticking to get one. It's even one lock for one lock. Since just need to hit one more. Cool. Black hole down. But pressure's mounting. Black hole is down. Oh, we're off right now. Halfway up. Now you gotta try and exit that area before it gets back up. Yep. Oh, wait, hold on. Core flip goes down. Sent right to the midfield. Nothing results from it though. Sent again. Black hole instantly goes down the second it pops up. Shiro, oh, almost gets it in, but gets deflected by that goalie right there. Not going to allow the core to go in just yet. Buying their time, though, they're available. 
making sure that nothing too risky happens. Oh, they're putting up the pressure. Ooh. Three seconds left on the clock. And that is overtime. This okay. is going to be the last ball. Will Fanshawe take the first map against the Saints? Will this be their first map loss? Or will the Saints be able to bring this to double overtime? We shall see. Will they be able to even up the ball? The core is zooming. And now Embed, Ember looking to get this one. Available being the bastion of defense right now. The pressure is Ooh. mounting. This could be their first map loss in ECAC. And now the ball core is almost there. Oh. Embed gets Embered gets the dunk, bringing this to overtime, two to two. Saints do not want to give up this map. That was clean. That was a really clean shot. All right, one more minute on the clock. Let's see how they do this one. Let's see indeed. Now, one core down, Fanshawe very competitive, but Saints answer right back. Core is moving fast, available on the defense. They're all lined up there. Sure, Isu playing the midfield right now. Just trying to dance around this core. Oh, tries to get knockoff, doesn't quite get it, but now net is open on Fanshawe. The Saints just have to defend this one block, but it's going to be Ooh. open. Still, Embered. Oh, that black hole moved it in the wrong position, and now it is all up in the air right now. It's towards the Saints' side. They could still lose this map. 30 seconds remain before overtime. Oh, that shot was... Uh, an attempt was made. Okay, wait, core flip? Oh, just didn't connect here. Sure, trying to keep it on the other side. Like, they, he's just, they're just trying to keep it not within their region. The Saints just don't like that core where their net is. That's it. Uh, so here, overtime is going to start. Wow, that core is getting a lot of speed build up right now. But, available, able to def- uh, And they're gonna get close. the first point here for the map. Okay. But. They still, Saints still have time to take this one. Oh yeah, for sure. The map. Yep, yep, yep. All right, so two to three on overtime. Mm, what are your thoughts? Oh, I think, I think the Saints will take this one. Saints will take this one? Yeah, they're just warming up, learning how Fanshawe operates. Okay, okay. I think they'll have a very good time going forward. Shiro picks prize fighter here, interesting. So looking for that increased damage mm -hmm. is what I'm seeing here. Uh, just gonna go for those uh, little technically kills, eliminations. Uh, Knockoffs. Yeah, uh, aggressive plays is what I'm expecting here from Shiro. So I'm gonna see how that plays That Already one of the defense cores goes down. Uh, ooh. Wow, look at Shiro, you brought so low already. That is going to be a pain to deal with. Okay, one to okay, so it's one to one. Let's see, can they get that second core down or the uh, defense down? Will they be able to do it? Oh, there it is. Fanshawe already having the goal wide open, available, playing the goalie. Going to have to try be very careful about this. And now back and forth, Embered the midfield right now he's very very low so oh, okay. knocked. doesn't get knocked off though he's still in this but that is going to be it he's knocked out and now it is a 2v3 for the saints okay i don't know if this is a thing but like hear me out right they should add a character that just creates five cores but only one of them is the real core that'd be crazy maybe in the next follow-up game of omega strikers as this is crazy. Look at these saves coming from all around. And there it is. Embered getting back in that game and getting the score in the overtime. Alrighty, so 1-0 for the Saints here. Uh, they're looking good, but again, they gotta be cautious. See how they play this one. Shiro not choosing to engage, taking uh, that second hit instead of the first, but Saints are not looking good. Core flip goes down. The song, I believe that's a song. Seraphine moment, I guess. Uh, coming out here. Not going to find anything, though. The Saints are wide open to attack here. So they're gonna go up right on the offense because it's the best defense at the end of the day. Uh, gonna try and get those... Ooh, core flip going... Oh, I just missed it. You saw that, right? I saw that. Oh, man, that was so Insane. close. Okay. Maybe Shiro can cook something here. Maybe. Maybe, just maybe he can... Maybe... Get this one correct, but 
think it's going to quite happen. Saints net wide open. Now available. I have to defend this goal with his life. Oh, there an it is. He's going to try and pass it over to Shiraisu, but the black hole is taken down. It's a 2v2. It is a 2v2 situation. Oh, Shiraisu beautiful unlocks the net. And now one more goal. There it is. Oh. Okay, that was... You saw that, right? Beautiful. Core flip, it hits the <laughs> it's the it's the defense and then just whacks it right into the neck. Beautiful. Now Saints are on set point currently. It is two nothing. Vantra has a lot of catch up to play, but it's still possible. They're putting pressure already, but it's one one on terms of the locks here. Ember trying to open things up here. Not gonna quite get it though. Back and forth here. Very, very dicey, but now Saints Net oh, no. up once again, but now with their backs up against the wall, when the pressure is mounting, that is when they answer. Oh yeah, a lot of damage there going on Ember, uh, but uh, they're able to defend for now. Never mind, I jinxed it. Uh, it didn't happen. And I need to stop saying that they're defending well. Yeah, maybe, maybe. But speaking of not defending well, unfortunately, Naku Taiken has been knocked out at seventh place here. Oof. He fell rough bit since we last saw him. But nonetheless, I think Pitsy is still in this race, so we still have some Saints going there. DFD. Alrighty, well, back to uh, back to Omega Strikers. One core goes down, or one wall goes down. Barrier. I need to get the proper terminology for that. I'm gonna remember eventually. Uh, but until then, I'm just gonna call them something. Uh, but Shiro is brought really low right now, trying to go for that health, but not gonna find anything. Just trying to stay alive, basically. Uh, wow. That is a lot of healing. It is a lot of healing, and hey, they need to get this block here. They're putting a lot of pressure, sending two strikers up here. There it is. Don't have control of the ball, but it's going back and forth in that corner. And there's the pop-up. Doesn't quite get it, though. Sure, Isu trying to get control back here. Available playing great core defense flip. right now. Gets the core flip off. Now it's in the wheelhouse of the Saints. They just need to get one dunk in there, but Ember can't get quite control. Gets it in, but the defense from Banshaw is too strong. We're in overtime. Saints just need to score one more core and this is going to be a 1-1 in the series or in the wait game. okay hear me out they they all oh, i was about to say they shoot through the black hole curve it and get it down but oh boy all right the defenses for the saints have gone down too so now it's a uh, open net to an open net who can make it work maybe maybe not we'll see Gets into the red zone, but not gonna find anything just yet. It's bouncing around, but it's not oh, getting to close. the same side. Not getting to the same side. They're keeping up the pressure very, very well, but it's all about that one last goal. It's going no. to go over to Fanshawe. It is 2-2 overtime once again. The Saints need to answer, or this map will slip away from their grasp with just one more game. Okay. So here, they need to get that pressure up. But how do they keep that pressure? Ooh, very, very good bomb there, but not gonna find the bounce. Uh, their, their goalie is doing really, really well for Fancha. Like, I, they are defending superbly. Uh, but speaking of defending, that is something that the Saints might be struggling a little bit on right now, as their net is wide open. Uh, all defenses still left up and available for Fancha, so. And not the best of scenarios. Wow. Core flip comes through and goes in. It goes straight into the Saints. The Saints lose this one. And now Fanshaw winning another set, putting the Saints backs up against the wall. This is it. This could be their first map loss right here. And now, speaking of losses, let's take a look at TFT, where things are looking pretty grim for some of these players. Yep, grim indeed, but wow, that's a lot of Nautiluses. That's a lot of potential hooks. <laughs> Maybe that's the play, just build a wide with the Nautiluses, get as many The wall as you of Nautilus. <laughs> but now it looks like Elder Drake is up to be an enemy here. So we see Pitsy in this firm second place, hasn't moved to very much from last we saw, but it looks like he is on a win streak. Yep, and win streaks do get you a lot of gold, so let's hope that keeps up. In last place here, we have the Chibi Sona ro uh, rope, 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 rope. I think that's rope, yeah. I think I wrote that correctly. 
wrote that. Ah, yes, I wrote it. No, I read it. Um, <laughs> words are hard. Roads bring you places. Yes, they do. Roads bring you to the library where you can see these words in these things called books. I should probably of, go to a library. <laughs> we should. We'll take a little trip sometime soon. But speaking like of grass first. <laughs> books, we're going to look at the playbook of... I think this is... Clenby? Clenby? Oh, let's look at Pitsy. He has great lovers, spirit walkers, and dragon lord exalted. Wow, he has so many. Exalted, sage, behemoth, dryad, and invoker. Plus seven more? Yeah, that's a lot of combos. That is an amazing comp from Pitsy here. I'd be surprised if he loses this one. If he does, he would be losing. That is... Note. Nope. Robe. Robe. And robe? robe has been eliminated by Pitsy. Oh, Robe. Okay. But that, yeah, that was the cheapy Sona. Okay. But I have to say, Pitsy's got a really cute character. I don't know what that is, but it's pretty cute. The Pitsy? Yeah, look at his character. It's like a... A little wooden guy? It's like a flower. Well, like it has a... It holds a flower. It's, it's like got a like a... a golem uh, man. It's got a... It, no, it's got a... Uh, um, Melio fireball in it. Oh. I think that's what it is. I could be completely wrong, but... That's what it looks like. Well, hey. Wow, Omega Strikers is looking very competitive right now. One, one already. It's not looking great for the Saints. They're already down to in this map. Whoever takes this. If Fanshaw takes this next one, that's going to be the Saints experiencing their first map loss in the entire league. Yup, and wait. Isn't this the finals? This is the finals. This is the grand finals. Yeah, so like, whoever wins this wins everything. This is, uh... Oh, well, we still have more maps. We have lots of maps to get. Oh, well, this yes, but like... Five. I mean, whoever wins this best of five wins it all, right? Yes. So this like, this is for all the marbles in ECAC. Who would want marbles? Uh, maybe marble collectors. But looking Those at those, still this, exist. I'm one of them. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> wow. Speaking of collecting marbles, it looks like Fanshaw is going to collect this marble as they're now just one point away from taking this map. Yep, map is looking uh, pretty grim for the Saints. I'd say they need to step up their game, but I know they're trying as hard as they can every single time, so maybe they're getting skill diffed, or maybe, like, just they're feeling out their enemy, you know? Just, just, maybe this just, map just isn't there. Yeah, that's a possibility, too, yeah. Uh, you know, them, circular stuff. With them being undefeated, there shouldn't be a wheelhouse where they're not at least having a competitive time right now Banshaw is dominating yeah the Saints still don't have a point in the map on the board yet this is where they're looking to turn things around here for a reverse sweep situation but they're just one goal away from doom and gloom if that was a time you need to get some core shots this is it oh. available being the last line of, of defense right here able Beautiful to push flip. it away core flip one more time Isu in control here, Embered also trying to get the wall bounce, trying to psych out his opponents. Not going to quite do it. Double still on the goals here, knocking it up, keeping it at bay. But that's going to be a very fast oh! thing, and that is going to be the Saints' first map loss. And Fanshaw Fuel gets one point in the series. It is a best of five. We have at least two more games left. Wow, I did not expect that. So Saints get their first taste of defeat. Um, it probably doesn't taste good. I don't know, I've, I've... What does defeat taste like? Probably sour, bitter, and all of the things you don't want to taste. And now, we are here in top two. It's Pitsy versus Popcorn Par. We have seen this matchup before, but Popcorn Par finished third last we saw him. We yep. have a much more competitive match this time. Pitsy, gonna win that one. And now... I think we're just one or two more matches away from I, uh, a Pitsy victory. I'm gonna take a, yeah, a wild guess. I think Pitsy wins this one. Just, just, just a hunch. Uh, considering he's on fire and there isn't really much that can stop him. I don't know, like, maybe he gets a three star. But other than that, I don't think anything else is gonna stop him. Popcorn is, uh, 
is as good as popped. Yes. You're looking a little burnt right now. Uh, but, you know, crazier things can happen. But with TFT... Is it possible to unpop popcorn? Uh, maybe. But it's not not possible for Popcorn Par here to have a very good matchup here against Pitsy. Things are looking very Pitsy sided right now. Sure, he can take down quite a few of his soldiers, but not going to be enough to get the win today as Pitsy wins first this game. Alrighty. For their twice in a row. Yeah. Pitsy's on a win streak. Wait, doesn't that like basically guarantee him a W if he gets within like the top five? I think the format's a little bit interesting for TFT, three so matches, not entirely. And you get sure. points for each placement, right? Yes. It's like if you get eight points for a win, and he got eight points twice, right? If he gets... So that means nobody else got eight points, right? So realistically speaking, if you won second place twice, you would get seven points, right? Which means he's two points ahead of whoever won second place twice. Which means that he can be, assuming that the person that was in second place twice takes first place this time, on the next round, as long as he is in, so wait seven. I'm doing math and I don't. I I don't like math. Well, I have an escape for you right now. It's Omega Strikers. We're here in the picks and bands. Atlas gonna be picked out for available once again. As long as he's third. Third. As long as he's third, he still W's. All right. So things are looking pretty exciting for Pissy here in the third game, but. I'm going to flip back over to Omega Strikers. Them experiencing their first map loss. Seeing a bit of a switch up in terms of picks, at least on the Saints side. See that Juliet and Juno picked up instead of a few other characters. Let's take a look. We see very similar picks on the side. Yes. Of Fanshawe. But we do have Shiro on the slime. The slime. It's slime yes. time. It's slime time. Shiro has been playing uh, a lot of sliming, so yeah, this Juno's is like his main. Strong. Juno's very good, very strong in the right hands, a little bit tricky. Very dominant in the beta, and still dominant here after a quick rework. Just takes a little bit more skill than the pilot here. Wait, what the? I just saw landmines fall from this guy. Yeah, that is slime time. Slime drops down. Oh yeah, right. Slimes that send things forward. I think it's like the swim summer skin that changes how those slimes lo look. Yep, yep, like yep. pool floaties. But hey, Saints already doing amazing here to start things off, putting the pressure on oh. the fan chop, which is as I say that, I can yeah. just curse it, and they lose one of their locks. Yeah, so just, wow! Absolutely terrific there. Just, uh, dashes into a punch, and just punches the core in there through brute force Vi moment basically uh, uh though starting off here saints do lose one of their locks core flip going to come out by I me uh but okay saints are able to trade it out so it's one for one let's see if they can keep oh sure take a lot of damage here but not too bad they do end up getting that second lock unlocked the Goal is open. Can they get the core in, though? That's the question. That Maybe. The question everybody's asking. Will they be able to do it twice in a row? Ember just barely missing the final shot in there. But it looks like True Isu also going to lead the charge here. And Bailable also going up on the offense. Yeah, that core is get really floating in that mid area. Not oh, getting much action, I was going to say. But that luck gets flipped. The Korgs gets flipped. Not once, but twice. And again with the Vi Punch. Getting it back into that net. Embert is doing super well. Amazing job from Embert. Able to get those last touches that matter so much. And they're already on the set point. Sure, just sniped the core. Holy. Like, they literally just <laughs> threw it, and, ah, yeah, that'll hit, a, that'll hit a lock. That's why they're here. They're the best of the best here in the Grand Finals for ECA 
Let's see. Oh, Ember just went away. Ember gone, and oh, sure, Isu single-handedly holding off all three members with Bailable in tow on the goalie position. And that's what Juno affords them, is much more defensive coverage. Sure, it might not be all in on the attack, but Juliet more than makes up for that. Yep, that Juliet is decimating right now with two goals. And uh, Shiro is playing the neutral game really well, just playing that midfield most of the time, making sure that the core doesn't come towards their side is so effective, like they're so effective at it, right? So playing that neutral is essential to the Saints strategy here. But uh, speaking of strategies, I don't think losing your second lock is a good one. Core flip from Shiro, going to get it off to the other side, but not for long. Bouncing back and forth through that mid side. Wow, what a jump. Really good jump, yeah. Going to throw it through the door once again. What the ricochet was that? Yeah, they're just unable to open it up as I see it. That is it. The Red Sea has been parted, and now the Saints just have to dunk it in now. But with the mounting pressure. Oh, oh they snipe it in out of what nowhere from cross that? maps. And that is going to be the first point for the Saints on this map and in the series. Uh, did, did, you, did you see that? Amazing. That was insane. That was an absolute snipe. I didn't I didn't think the core would go that fast. And I didn't think we were gonna get into our next game of TFT so fast. Things are loading up. We're just in the beginning here. Not too much to see there. But now we're also buying our items for Mega Strikers. If I had better eyesight, I could say, oh, we're seeing Spark of Leadership be committed Ooh. by the Juno. Aerials by the Aimi on the enemy team. Yep. And a few more items also that I couldn't quite read in time. Uh, I couldn't read them either, I'm sorry. But uh, nonetheless, things are looking ooh. to be more explosive here with some items in the game now. Yep. And I mean, if I've learned anything, it's that explosions are fun to see. Uh, alrighty. Ooh, Saints losing both their locks already. Not looking ideal. But they do manage to get oh, one back. So that was almost two. Just doesn't make it. Although, Embered here taking so much damage. Okay, never mind. Just gonna heal it all up. Don't mind that. Uh, that healing is insane. Where does that even come from? It must be an item. I don't think so, because they, they, they were using it in the, in the last one. Oh. Yeah, it's just like know. AoE healing. Maybe it's from the goalie? Maybe, maybe. All right. There it is. It's open, and the Saints are continuing to put pressure here, but they have to deal with some pressure of their own. Now both nets open. Both teams look scrambling for a goal. It's overtime. It's anybody's game. This core is only going to get quicker and quicker. There's a pop-up from Bailable. Pass to Shiro Aisu, and they're going to be passed right back. Now they're on the defense, trying to get a pass, but nice jump by Shiro Aisu. Going to put up the pressure. Julia almost don't keep, don't quite, doesn't quite get it. Now Shiro Aisu passing it up, and oh. that is going to be a nice bank shot from everybody on the team. One, two, three, and in the core goes Saints taking this one already 1-0. One, oh. one minute on the clock. Let's get this started for the next point. Yeah, here we are. Saints usually losing their locks first, but they manage to always clutch it up in the end. We'll see if that same thing happens once again or if they'll have a decisive victory this match. Now maybe somebody needs to explain to the Saints that losing your locks isn't a good idea. I think that's just the problem. They just don't know. They just go all in, I think. There it is. One, two, buckle my shoe. That lock is looking to be sniped on the side of Fanshawe. There's only one remaining. Saints net wide open. As we see, just barely misses every single time. Available, doing a good job on the goalie, passing to Shiro Aisu, but now has to contest with two of these people. Gets the pop-up, doesn't quite get it in their wheelhouse right now. Shiro Aisu scrambling to catch up. Yeah, they got the three, they're looking for the four, but uh, it's kind of hard to get that core to hit that lock. Oh, wait, was that a core flip I just saw? There it yep. is. Yep, okay, there's three, four. Let's just score some more. Come on. There They're getting there. They're getting very close. But it could be anyone's game right now. But oh, hey, oh, oh. it is the Saints game as they bank shot another one from out of nowhere. Two to zero. This 
is looking like another point to go the Saints' way. So uh, I think the Saints turned on their monitors now. I think you're right. I think you're right. <laughs> They, yeah, they are much more comfortable on this map than the last one. That black hole is just a pain to deal with. Alrighty. Let's see how this one is going to play out. Uh, oh, core flip goes out. Shiro going to take uh, second, or the rebound on that one. Emerald just kind of healing in that AoE. Doesn't want to be, bleh, be kept too low, too long. Going to get that second lock down. One, two. Now they just need it in. In to the net. Oh, okay, never mind. They're gonna lose their lock. Alright, all four locks are down. All nets are open. Cool. Ember just misses his punch. Just barely. Saints looking to get their lead here in this map. Secure it by two points, but it looks like Fanshaw doesn't want to go down without a fight. Now both nets open. Fanshawe putting up a lot of pressure, getting the pump oh. and getting the goal, making this one 2 1. Yeah, that was a really tight situation for the Saints to be in. I mean, the core was just so close to their net and they couldn't attack efficiently. Uh, so they couldn't get that out and just went right through as Embered instantly just knocks one into the uh, border, eliminating them immediately. That is going to be a huge power play for the Saints available, but as that player comes back, uh, power play will end. And uh, now it's a 3v3 instead of 2v3. Yes, it is. There it is. That is open. Saints just one point away from taking this one. It's anybody's game right now. Ooh. As the Saints just have one lock away, but they're in the lead. Almost gets the dunk, doesn't quite get it. Now Shiraisu trying to get the setup, trying to just mount the pressure on them. Doesn't quite get the dunk once again. Saints just struggling to get this last point. Yep, but at least they have a lock up, so they don't need to stress too much about the defense. They can go a little bit more on the offense right now, because they don't need to worry about an instant goal. But speaking about, the core flip comes around, Maybe trying to get a goal. Shiro does have it available, but it doesn't matter. Instantly gets it in. Beautiful shot there. All right, so we're at three again for the Saints. Uh, so they're gonna win that one. And uh, they're going for uh, another round of shopping. Storefront. Here we are at the storefront in the, the, the carousel. What are the picks gonna be? All I know is the Saints are gonna be picking you're dead last, I believe, as pretty high up there in the ranks. Yep. I mean, the Saints are looking pretty good on the side of GFT. Um, is, the, uh, is that Kira on say, in third place? I believe so. Yeah. So for for once, uh, wait. Is a. Uh, I'm gonna need my glasses. Where is our other player? Uh, oh, okay. We will look at that yep. soon. We're still in the beginning stages, but we might be in the ending stages here for this Omega Strikers map. The Saints only need to win one more set. Take this map home, bringing it to a 1-1 scoreline in the series. Yup, and the Saints already have both locks unlocked, so they only need to worry about getting that core into the goal. Can they manage to get it in, though? That is the true question. Yeah. Core does pick up a lot of speed there. It's a very quick core at right now, but oh, Ember almost gets the snipe in. Doesn't quite get it though. And now Isu playing the midfield, not going to get it quite just yet. So they still have one more lock on the board, but as I say that, it falls. Now Bailable going to have to play extra careful on this defense. So they are wide open, just as Fanshawe is. Yup, so now they need to worry. Core flip comes around. Available doesn't want that core going into the net, but can he stop every shot? The core flip comes around by the goalie, going to stop it from happening, but she almost got that snipe in. Embered tries to get it in again, but denied. I mean, just absolutely relentless on that goal. And oh. there it is. Fanshawe starting off the set with a goal. Yep, instant goal, ready to go. Uh, not ideal, but I mean, it is what it is. So, Saints are gonna take that one. Um, pretty much the face, Core is back in play. 
Let's see who loses their first locks here. Looks to be the Saints. Yep, the Saints are going to lose not one, but two locks. And wow, Core almost getting right into their goal. But they're not going to allow that. The defense is just a little bit too strong for now. Uh, but as it gets whittled down, they get another one in. Oof, two in 50, 20 seconds. Yeah, that is looking very dicey for the Saints. Now, already on set point, Fanshot looking to have a horse in this race. Yeah, so let's see how this one plays out. Okay, lock number one goes down. Lock number two goes down. Maybe a goal here, a wow. goal here. The Saints answer with a quick goal over their own, bringing this to one to two. Actually, this was even faster. That one was in less than 15 seconds. Yeah, the Saints now looking to answer. Hey, they're saying, hey, if you're going to play aggressive, we're going to play aggressive. <laughs> now I think we're going to see some very quick matches from here on out. People are running out of gas. They are just hungry for these goals. Yeah, Corflip comes through, but actually gets sent to the side of the Saints. So not ideal for them, but first lock goes down. The second soon to follow. And now that net is open. Goalie going to walk up to have that was like the midfield there just to try and get that aggressive play ready uh and just pulled back completely there goes invulnerable doesn't get hit by the ultimate uh so that he can just stay up and running the second lock on the side of the saints it goes down and the core goes in oh the set goes over to Fanshaw, and now it is one to two for this map only one more one more point away for the Saints. One, two more for Fanshawe. Yep. And if Fanshawe wins these two, then they will be on series point, which could be very dicey. Yes, indeed, that could be. So, let's see here. On the side of TFT. Um, okay, hold on. I'm going to, like, travel closer to the... Is that PC? Is that our boy? Because we got, like, the first one. But do we have the second, the, the right under him? It's, could be. It could that, be. That, right there? That, yes. It's too small for me to read. That's our guy right there. Uh, Alrighty. It, it looked about right. I, I, it's the same face. It's just like that's too small to read. Exactly. But speaking of reading, these core shots are getting read very well by the Saints as we're here. And potentially our final set for the map if the Saints can win this one out. It looks like Fanshawe is beating the wake up. Now, this court is going wild. Saints net is wide open. It could be a goal by Fanshawe any second. Yeah, Fanshawe does have their lock up and available, so they don't need to worry too much, but the Saints, uh, they don't like that, so they're gonna try and change it. Uh, Ultimate comes out, big AOE blast, not going to find the core though, so not much effect from that one. Uh, what I believe is a core flip by Fanshawe here. Not going to connect, but that goal does go in anyways. And uh, the Saints are not looking ideal here. Oh, Fanshawe has woken up here. Now looking at TFT. I think this is going to be a win for Naku Taikin. Yep, that is another win. So win Saints are doing some, good. Some Saints doing well. Saints still in the lead in Omega Strikers, but just unable to close this one out just yet as Fanshawe is mounting the pressure. They need to just get one more set. The pressure is on. They lost one of their first maps in the league. They don't want to take their first loss. Yep. All right. Here, Core flipping back and forth. Core flip comes into effect. You're going to find a lot of speed there, but Core flip is no longer available now for that goalie so not gonna be able to defend that second lock and in it goes oh my fanshaw with another one Whew. wow now set point for fanshaw they're looking to take this set and put themselves at a 2-2 game yep this is a best of five if memory serves right yes so saints need to win three in a row yeah they'll have to set themselves up for a reverse sweep situation after not losing any maps losing two in a row would be devastating and just overall hard to deal with when you've been in the winner's seat for the entire league but hey it's the grand finals if there's anywhere where it's gonna happen this is it yep so here Emberd 
brought really, really low, so they gotta watch out how they play this one. Uh, Shiro manages to kind of win that core flip, not going to hit the lock, and as I say that, it goes down. Trying to go on the offensive here, but they're just not able to. The Saints taking so much damage, just trying to get that core to move around. But here, okay, the core gets actually passed towards Fanshawe's side. The first lock goes down, but ooh, oh my, Big Shiro save. the save, beautiful. But the pressure is still mounting. It's going to go over to Emberd. They need to get this goal unlocked to try and put some pressure on the side of Fanshawe. It is 0-3v2 currently, but it's still just a 2v2. The core is going wild. Almost gets a snipe by Aimee, and now that is it. Ooh. We are going into a 2-2 map. Next set is winner takes all for this map. Yup, not looking ideal for the Saints here. If they lose that, uh... If they lose that, it's not gonna be uh, it's not gonna be fun to reverse sweep. Speaking of losses, no complete losses on the side of TFT just yet. Akutagan still in that firm third position. No one being knocked out of the race yet. That one's gonna be going long. Yep. So here, Spark of Focus is uh, picked up by Shiro. Increases cooldown rates more per Spark per Spark effect. Do you know what a Spark is? I think that is when you hit the core. You spark it? Actually, it's a class of awakenings you can pick up. Oh, I see. Okay, okay, okay. Makes sense. Alrighty. Yeah. Well, let's yeah, see. You can get spark of that. You can get spark of a few other things. Okay, yeah. okay. And then it just kind of stacks up. I exactly. see. Exactly. It's That's more... just... Yeah, sorry. I, I, I forgot there for a second, but I ran over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But, uh, now we're here net is open saints could start things off pretty hot here but now it's looking very wild as the pressure is mounting there it is juliet not gonna be able to get the pop-up wow look at that pressure oh! from amber getting the knockout score on the goalie and that's how you want to start off a set wow that was beautiful all right you don't see those often you don't perfect you don't. core flip Perfect core flip, perfect plays all around from the Saints. They just want to close out this map with a win. They started off the lead so strong. Fanshaw really waking up in the second half, though. I mean, look at that. It's already open. They're already putting up so much pressure. And they answer back with a Juliet rapid punch of their own. Yeah, Juliet's rapid punches are just... They do things, man. They do things. They, they give you so many opportunities to get that core in the goal. It is... Uh... It's truly a Juliet moment, whenever that happens. She's the cover person for a reason. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's very good. But hey, the Saints get it open very, very quickly. Doing to the three-man commit, it worked out. But now, look at that! They get the goal, Embered, putting them on set point. This could be their first map in the series. And it would be a hard-fought one, but it would be one nonetheless. Bringing us to a game four, Fanshaw. Doesn't want that. They want to close this one out. Continue to the clean sweep. Let's see it. Yeah, there is always a possibility for everything. Ooh, Julia gets that first one, gets that second one. Shiro trying to keep it on their side, not bringing it to the same side, but it does go there anyways. The offense is mounting. Are they able to hold it off? They do? Okay. Can Oh, okay, Juliet tries to block it off but doesn't quite manage the slimes holding down that core onto the side of Fanshaw. Fanshaw here in a really stressful situation but they do manage to clear it never mind comes right back the Saints are lethal with that core trying to keeping it as far away from their side as possible that second lock does end up going down they gotta watch out here the core flip does come out but does not connect uh, into that net so Shiro here has the opportunity does hit it but doesn't connect again another core flip on the side of Fanshaw doesn't do much but does try and get that priority as Shiro here keeping that doing such a good job at just keeping the core onto Fanshaw's side they aren't able to achieve enough if it's on their side because it's so predictable to see where the core is going if you launch it that way here Juliet punches come out not gonna find anything though Shiro gets shot out going to need oh, oh no way this is going to one final core. 
Yep. Who will take this? This is winner takes all. Two to two. Will the Saints crumble under the pressure or will they come out stronger? We shall see as this is off to a hot start here. Sure, I see already putting up the pressure with Ember. They get one lock. They get two. Will they get the dunk in no time at all? We will see. Ember gonna get stunned out, unable to keep the pressure up. Now, very low health, looking for a knockout very soon. And that is going to be a save coming out from one of the items, I believe. And now, we're gonna see. Bouncing back and forth. This is being getting very intense. Ember almost getting knocked out there. He's still in this game looking for health. Shiro, I think, accidentally takes it. Whoa! He's going to pass it over. Ember still playing on the offensive with no health left to his name, but he's still going to have to try and knock, <laughs> go for these pop-ups. This is crazy. Shiro with the beautiful save there. The bank shot not quite connecting. Shiro tries to keep control. There it is. In. Beautiful shot there by Ember. There is the first map for the Saints in the series. And this is it, 1-1 one, one in the series. You wouldn't have it any other way here in the Grand Finals. This is a best of five. We're just getting started. But what we're just gonna be getting winding down with is TFT. I believe this is one of the last few match games we're gonna be seeing. Uh, last but we'll see well, okay we're still in the thick of it here hold on uh we got like a a chat here uh from danners explaining how it works okay so uh pitsy is at 16 points needs one more to get into the check state but how many games are they playing technically if i remember properly an infinite amount just whoever... you need to checkmate your opponent but it's a limited amount of people who get the checkmates right you need to be like, I believe it was in the lead, and then you need to win another one or something like that. Is there only one winner in this grand finals? There must be, I suppose. I, I, like, I assume, yeah. So that's looking to be Pitsy here, taking it all in this game. Where if is he can, Pitsy? yes. He is in fourth place right now. I mean, that's a pretty solid position, all things considered. I'd much rather fourth the fifth. Hmm. What's he going to pick on this carousel? I see. So once he gets to the 17 points, which you'll probably get after this game, yeah. he needs to win an additional game to get the win. Like full win, number yes. one. Yes. So if he's number two, he doesn't win. I'm assuming so. So you need to get yourself in a position to where you have enough points to win, and you need to win it all. So this could potentially go very long, like you said. Hold on, I have classes at seven tomorrow. I need to make sure I'm there. Oh <laughs> uh, no, it's 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 10 p.m. We're fine. Might be fine. Uh, hmm. We'll see how this one plays out. Anyways, so here we are having a pretty interesting situation where uh, we have is that. Yeah, we have mostly f so four Reapers and five Heavenlies. Uh, so, never seen that before, but of course, I don't play TFT all that much, so not surprising. Uh, but we'll see how this one plays out. Yeah, so even if he gets second, it's not a win, even if he has the 17 points. So, okay, so he just the got next game is where he's going to start trying. He has to, to pop off. Spot. He has to pop off, and if anyone's going to do it, it's going to be Fitzy. Wait, hold on. Like, I, I sh should I actually just check in case I might be late to my class at seven? I don't think it's gonna go that long, but well, I mean, you might be a TFT little bit tired is like for thirty minutes. Wait, like TFT is thirty minutes, right? Give or take. So there's this game, and then there's another game. And if yeah. he wins the next game, that's it. He has he a one it. out of eight chance of winning that that next game. Oh, it's Pitsy though. Well, like, yeah, okay, he's the goat. Two out of like, eight, maybe. My point is, the fact that he needs to win one entire one, that is insane. I w like, how do you do that accurately? Uh, you just have to be the most dominant one. That gives other people a chance to get the lead. So it gives a chance for other people to get into the lead. We'll see. I like this map right here. That one that looks like a Minecraft town. Aerial shot. We'll see once again. Town. I think that was, I think Little Chop's uh, map. Like this one is like a Diablo fire escape, right? Yeah, yeah. This is a Diablo fire escape. I see yeah. that. I see that. <laughs> but there was another another one that looked just like a map of Minecraft. 
a Minecraft map. Yeah. But yeah, I think this one huh. will go long. But if anyone's gonna make it short, it's gonna be Pitsy. All right, we believe in Pitsy. In Pitsy, we trust. In Pitsy, we trust. Well, that's a beach map. That's beach like. Map. There's a spooky map. Oh, that looked like uh, a was... that, Yeah, that's Minecraft. <laughs> there it was. We saw okay. It for a split second. Yeah, we saw it for a split second, but you see those blocks, and you instinctively know it. Just it sends you back to the days where you were playing Bed Wars with your friends. Exactly. Or exactly. without your friends, depending on if you had friends or not. Exactly. Oh, hey, you made friends there. Or enemies. Yeah, mostly enemies. <laughs> and speaking of enemies, we're going to be seeing... Oh, God. Scuttles here. Not the scuttles. It's a massacre. Alrighty. Wow, 1-1 one, one already for Omega Strikers. Yeah, looking interesting here. Uh, definitely a change in team composition. Shiro on... I don't... I'm not familiar with that character. I think that is... Is that Tofu there? On the attack for Ember? Yeah. Sorry, I just want to clarify that. That is a goalie, usually. Yeah, usually a goalie, but hey, if he plays him well enough on the attack, I don't have anything against him. He just wants the bigger core hitbox there. Of course, we still have available on the Atlas, keeping things... Uh oh nice He just... There. Oh no! The Saints oh. locks are done. Not looking good for the Saints. Shiro gets brought back, heals a lot, core flips. Going to bank shot, actually manages to get the lock. Almost gets it into the net, but just doesn't. Uh, that. Oh, wow. And now set what? point is going to be very close for Fanshawe as they snipe it. Is it just me, or did that core basically just teleport in there? Like, that was fast. That was fast. I think that might... No, that was not... Her all that was one of her abilities, just the big punch. It just does so much knock. Falcon punch. Hard to land, <laughs> but if you can land it, like the best of the best can right here today, it is lethal. Yep, for sure. We're gonna be uh, we're gonna be seeing how that one goes. But oh, oh, punch almost connects, but doesn't. Instead, it is just the standard kick that will open up that second lock. But the Saints, no locks unlocked and fully open net. They got to watch Open's out. Down, and that is going to be the set going over to Fanshawe. Once again, taking the first point for this map. Yep. Alrighty. Uh, the Saints are looking too good. They, they, could, they, could, they could have a little bit more. Yeah, just a little bit. They are just up against the other grand finalist here. So it's no question that they are having a little bit of trouble here. As once again, it's the best of the best. Heavy impact. Impacts hit harder. Multi hit returns cooldown. Ooh, sounds fun. Yeah, that sounds like you get to bash people. <laughs> exactly. That seems pretty good. And now, yeah, no one wants specialized training. No one wants the other item either. Hmm. The stragglers here, and now this is right back into the Saints. I feel like I need to play a little bit more aggressive, but it's going to be hard. The tofu on attacks a very strange. How game. is that lock still up? But hey, it's working. Lock still up. That is just the defense difference on the side of the Saints. Yeah, for sure. I mean, to be fair, they have like two defenders. Well, I mean, that's not going to help though. Both their locks go down one right after the other. That bank shot is kind of whack. Why does it bank shot like that? Because of the drums on the sides of this map. Oh! Bounce the, the core pretty wildly here. It speeds it up by a large margin. So you have to be pretty careful about the redirects. The bumper yeah. in the middle is also a pain here. So we see Ember going to move into that goalie position as Atlas has been knocked out of the match for now. Two more seconds until he's back in the game, but anything could happen in those two seconds. He's back, but now things are looking dicey. Both goals are wide open. Pop-up comes out from Aimee, and that oh. is another point. And another goal for that was clean. Fanshawe. Again, just those shots are so fast. Very fast. Like, that is insane. Alrighty, one way or the other. I'm gonna see how this one goes. Shiro just staring at the core for like a solid second. <laughs> just like, do I really want to kick this core? Do you? Do you really? 
It's just a core. Like, come on. Do you really want to kick that core? I, I, in the end, the answer was yes, but uh, that solid second there of oh. just philosophical questions. Both nets are wide open currently. This is looking crazy, but once again, Atlas gets knocked out. Bailable going to be down for the count oh. 10, and with no goalie. That was a great bank shot. One more point for Shant fan shot, looking at another set point. Yeah, no, uh, very, very smart to actually shoot it onto the uh, the bumper and so that it could go into the net. Getting it that extra speed was uh, was probably crucial there. And uh, let's see this one on, t on the t blah, 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 words are hard on the side of TFT. I have just been informed Pissy has been eliminated, but he still made the 17 point qualifier for the next game so so he needs to sweat next game next game he's he was be saving fine. himself he doesn't want to reveal all the tricks he has in the okay arsenal. okay fair enough fair i enough. assume he's going to be going all out in the next one just as the saints are going all out as they are up against the wall for this set they don't want to let fanshaw get in the lead once again this is looking very hard for them to do though as they Ooh. are just not getting in the groove it seems wait one two they have the ability to score. They just need to play it right. Oh, wait, there's the... Okay, an opening was there, but it wasn't taken. Ember there gets it is. the ricochet. That massive hitbox just hits the core from a kilometer away. I don't even know how that worked, but... Hey, the Tofu got the dunk there, and that's what it's all about. They need the more of those as things are looking dire for them if they can maybe even up the set this would be it that they need to try and take this one Whoa. in their favor that was a lot of speed on the core there a little bit risky but that is perfectly fine the saints need to keep it out of their zone though they had a lot more defense when uh shiro was on slimy but they just with that with this different character there's a lot less control over where the core is right those slime um, that slime minefield oh no yikes and just another set goes over yeah. fanshaw i'm i'm predicting that the shiro might swap back to this uh, back to slimy next uh, next one i have a feeling that might be the case as i think this comp just isn't quite working sure the tofu in theory this comp could be very good it is just not working out for them right now. The tofu uh, is just doesn't provide enough pressure. I think. <sighs> I think the game plan was would be, you know, you have Atlas, your goalie, solid, keeping with the same game plan. Yeah. Then your midfielder would kind of tee it up for tofu to, to dunk it in, but your team's just a little bit too slow to compete with how fast-paced Fanshawe's looking. Yeah, Fedro is definitely fast, but hey, look, it's Mr. 200 Years. It's Yone. Yeah, I mean, he's not 200 Years in TFD, though. <laughs> At least there's that. Why can't they just swap those two things? You know, swap TFT Yone to the power of, or like, League Yone to the power of TFT Yone so that he's finally balanced. Believe it or not, next patch, they're buffing him. Ooh. And Nakutaikin eliminated in third place. Oof. So just a few more rounds, and that TFT game is going to be over. And now, speaking of games that are maybe about to be over, we're going to look over at Omega Strikers. Was it over three times? This is an Overwatch. This is Omega Strikers. <laughs> Wait, you said Overwatch? No. Oh, okay. I, good. I, I, I didn't hear Overwatch. Let's just move on. Let's go. Eight deep in this game as both Annettes are open and now Ooh. the Saints need to win this set as if Fanshawe wins this Fanshawe wins this they are going to be 2-0 in the 2-1 in the series beautiful core flip but wow that was I mean that was just a shot of all times it was great Core Fanshaw. flip into an instant goal. Wow. Fanshaw playing very well this map. And Saints just struggling to get their comp together, unfortunately. Yeah, maybe they were cooking a little bit too much on this one. Could be, like, you know, just me, but I think they cooked a little too hard on this one. Perhaps. Oh, wait, hold on. Core flip gets one lock. They just need the second one. 
Saints need one more. Both teams just need one. But the pressure on the Saints is looking like it might be them to lose the net. But it's not going to quite be it. But it's still just so hard. They need to make it past these mid laners right now. And now, there it is. Available Atlas holding the weight of his team on his shoulders here, making sure this net does not crumble. While Fanshawe is still doing an amazing job at not letting anything go through. Yup, all right, there, there it, it goes. The lock is unlocked, but they do lose their tofu for it. So here, playing with the core, stalling for time, just want to get their third back up. And there he is, our big boy himself, ready to defend the point, or the core, or, well, actually, he's more on the offense than the defense. But ready to go up in action. The core bouncing around up and down, right to left. The second lock goes down for the Saints. It's an open net to an open net. And who can manage to actually get it in? Holy, it's bouncing around. Oh, Fanshawe gets it in barely with a, just a little sliver. And now 2-0 Saints up against the wall. Fanshawe just needs one more Goal, and that is going to be the map with Saints not getting a single point on the board. Yep, not a single point on the board. Not an ideal situation for them, that's for sure. But oh, okay, hold on. They just snuck a little, a little missile there. Managed to get the first lock, but uh, they also lose their own as Tofu does some somersault and manages to hit the corpse somehow. I don't know how, uh, but didn't result in much there as we do have that gun ray thingy, pushy sound wave. You know what I'm talking about. I know what you're talking about, but it looks like Fanshawe also knows what they're talking about as they're just pushing on the pressure here. Saints and net is wide open. It's up to Ember to try and open this net up as well, and he does. They're going full on offense. They get the elimination. It is a 2v3. Now is the time for a goal if there ever has been one, as sure Isu goes for the snipe, doesn't quite get it. Embered going in, they're both trying to get it through, but it's not going to happen as the pressure is just too much. And wow, the Octavia ult going to be amazing. Wow, look at that last second save from Bellable. He keeps his team in this. And now, this is it. It's in overtime. Who will take this? Will Saints hold on? But no, oh. it's going to be Fanshawe taking another map, taking map three for themselves. 2-1 is the scoreline in the series. And now that the dash Saints is perfect. need to go for a reverse sweep for the win. Yep. They need to go for the reverse sweep. Either that or they get sweeped. And honestly, that would be kind of whack. Because like, when you think about it, right? The Saints haven't lost a single match and then they just get sweeped? A single map. Well, they did get one map there in the last map. Well, yeah, but like... It was close. It was very <sighs> close. It was, I think, 2-2, two, two, one set away. And they won it, but that's not how you want to win it. Especially no, after for sure. just a sweep from Fanshawe. Yeah, so it's going to be interesting to see how this one develops. Um, thoughts on the games in general? Well, going forward, TFT Pitsy is in the position to win the next one if he can get first place. And that would be, he would be crowned the winner of that grand finals. And then if we look over at Omega Strikers once again. Saints now in a position to just try and climb out of this hole that they're in. Yeah. But very exciting grand finals in these ECAC games. We will be back with more after a quick break.
Pitsy, Clenby, Little Chubb. Those are the players in position to get checkmate over in TFT. As we see the picks and bans roll in for Mega Strikers as well, we're seeing the Dubu get picked once again. Hey, it's Slimy. Juliet and Juno. I called it. Very defensive comp as the offense from Banshaw has been unrelenting. Un Wait, was that Anvil Buffet? Did I read that right? I believe so. Who would want to eat an anvil? I know a few people. Like, I get it, it's rich in iron, but like, maybe a little too rich. Maybe, maybe. The anemics like it. But, uh, <laughs> nonetheless, we're here in this game, potentially final game for Omega Strikers. As we load in for TFT, I'm gonna focus in on this Omega Strikers map, as this is looking very dicey, as they get the goal. And if you feel like you want to look in at any one of these streams in particular, you can use exclamation mark streams in the chat and pull those up for yourself. Yup, here the bar in front of that net is the uh, the lock, right? So there's not- oh, wow! Billable just got a double KO, what was that? Phenomenal! Can the Saints do anything with that? The, the the Saints didn't do anything with a double KO. It's hard to do a match when the timer is so slow. Or so fast. And now this is looking crazy. Three dinks are needed to open up these nets. There's all three right there. I think it's one. And yeah, I now, think it's just one. I thought the three hearts meant something. But no, it's just one very vulnerable quick map for this one. Is that just like a hole to the void in the middle, or is it like a sure, wall? I'm sure we'll see what happens if the core hits that hole. No, I wonder what the, what happens if a person hits that wall. Oh, it is probably elimination. Just an instant death. Well, it takes a lot to knock somebody, so it... I think it acts like a wall. I believe so. That's what it's doing, yeah. Okie dokie. Well, now that we know... Oh, no. Oh yep. no. Acts like a wall. If you touch it, you're gonna be fine, but if you get knocked into it, that will spell doom. As doom is the feeling the Saints are having as it is 2-1 for the first set. Or 2-0 for the first set. Yeah, available just... The core got a bad bounce there. That was unlucky. Just... When that kind of thing happens, you, uh... You can't do much about it. You just... Unlucky. Oh, core flip comes out. Bailable passes it to Shiro. Shiro starts getting some bench bank shots. Ember opens that up. Ember is just looking for any opportunity. Goes invulnerable to dodge some damage, but not going to be enough to try. Oh, he does try and get it in, but I mean, just on that net 24 7, not allowing him to get anything done. Ember brought so, so low down for the count right now. Can I have to let his health regen? Can they take it here? Oh, the log comes out, but not enough to protect the Saints, but it doesn't matter as they score a beautiful shot there. Whew. Keeping themselves alive just a little bit longer. Maybe this is the beginning of a set flavor right here. Just two more points stands between them and one set point here. Not too much to close. If they just play perfectly from here on out, it's possible with their net opening up immediately. This is looking a little bit more dire. They need to answer back and quickly. Sure, Aizu leading the charge here. They're down a player already. Just waiting for Ember to come back. As the Juliet leads the charge, looking to dunk it in there against the Dubo, but sure, Aizu's there to save it. It's two on the defense right now. Make that three as Ember is back on the field. Yep, Shiro just helping out his defense. Man, as, uh, I mean, Bailables is not oh. looking good for health and is not looking good on that defense as he lets another one through, unfortunately. I mean, he just, at some point, they just shoot so many that you can't defend them all, you know? It's just a game of stamina. Sometimes you're just in the wrong The place. fingers start getting tired. Exactly. It's just, sometimes you can't, if the enemy has two on attack, just pass it between each other. There's eventually an uh, area where you can't defend all on your loan. So. Nope. Even with that big hitbox. Looking at TV, t t t TFT, we're seeing ta uh, Na Nakutaiken doing some planning there. Selling some items, getting in position for the next round. 
Alrighty, and items are picked up here. Hotshot hit the core harder. Hitting the core reduces cooldowns. I think Shiro wants to hit the core. Just a hunch. Alrighty, let's see how this one plays out. Shiro is playing mostly midfield here. Just letting himself uh, defend. Make sure that he doesn't head to the same side. Cause, and Shiro just has this habit of always playing on that midfield. Unless they have the advantage. Once they have the advantage, then they play upfield. But other than that, they always play defense. And here we can kind of see what the health bars. Ember brought so low, instantly eliminated two. So now it's a 2v1 power play against the Saints. Let's see, can the Saints, oh. Okay, oh, ooh. Yeah. Available, uh. All right, maybe a little bit of a skill issue there. Uh, <laughs> oh no. Yeah, the core kind of just slowly slid past him. Well, it just happens. It, it happens wrong sometimes. Place, wrong time. And especially when you're this deep in, it is just a game of stamina. Sometimes you're just not at your top game here. Nonetheless, they're looking to take this one back. Trying to be very aggressive here. They just need a win and quick. It's been a little bit too long. Need something to boost the morale. And this yep. might be the round to do it. Yeah, trying to get a win here is essential. Embered tries to land a hit, but just gets core flipped instantly. Not allowed to touch that core whatsoever. And they're just, they're keeping it on the Saints side so well here. Uh, pass goes down, tries to get to Emeryn, but doesn't quite make it. I mean, paying up that one. And then, ooh, the ultimate comes out again. That big AoE just making the core oh so hard to hit. And they still have that wall up. Core flip comes out. Juliet gets that one right in. Man, that's a pain. That's 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 a pain to the morale. And it must be as now Fanshawe is on a set point once again. Putting the Saints back up against the wall once more. They need to get the ball rolling and soon as if they win this set, they are on set point, a series point, and a map point. So yep. pretty dicey All right. here. Core is moving quick, and that Ooh. might be the first goal of a comeback from the Saints. All right, boys, comeback angle. We come back from this. Trust. We win those. If now, Maybe. If there's a time, now is the time. This is a momentum swing right here. I feel it. The Saints will be able to take it back from here on out. All right. I trust your hunch. All right. They get the first lock. Or, well, the only lock. Slime goes down. They connect. Not much after that. Okay. Banks off a wall. Almost gets it in, but doesn't. Gets saved by Aimee. Aimee doing such a good job in that goalie position. But, ooh, wait. Available. Okay. Plays wow. the upper field, and Embered just punches it in. Beautiful. Gets the dunk. Sealed yep. deal. All right, yeah. You said comeback angle? This is the comeback angle. This is the reverse river sweep. Oh, this man. Is it. Let us see it. The comeback. They just need to win this set, and then they are back in this race. This is the divisive set for the entire series. Will the Saints be able to win this one? Will they be able to continue this comeback angle? We shall see. Playing very well. Net is open. And that is going to be the uh, set going over to Fanshawe. And the Saints now have to do the impossible. They yep. have to try and bring this one back from the brink. Even it up. And take the win. And take the map. That is That's going to be hard. Do. Fanshawe looking very good though. Alrighty, so uh, do we have anybody in the lead right now that could checkmate? Uh, let's see. I can't quite read it. Yeah, I think that's a little too small to read. It's not just me, right? What? It's not just me that that's too small to read? The writing? Lil Chubb is in second currently, looking oh, okay. to be the winner. Pitsy currently in fourth, Clemvy in seventh. So it's between Pitsy and Lil Chubb currently. All right, all right. It's looking good. It's looking good. They have the. Uh... They have a pretty good angle signed up here. Uh, but on the side of Omega Strikers, Shiro saving the net once again. That core getting dangerously close. 
available, trying to keep them away from that net two. As is Job and Tails, as Dagoli. But here, ooh, Shiro getting a little bit aggressive here, trying to get some pressure up and running on the map. Emerald brought so low, going to put be put into uh, into the wall actually. Holy! Shiro down two for the count. Wow, the double KO. This is disastrous for the Saints. The net is wide open. It's all down to bearable to hold it off, but it's not gonna happen as Juliet goes through and gets the goal. Yeah. And Banshaw is looking to take playoff point. This is the last set. They have one point. The Saints need a comeback now, but if this won't happen, if that's not in the cards for them, this is going to be Fanshaw giving the Saints their first loss and that, that, that it's going to be them winning grand finals for Omega Strikers and ECAC. Yup. So hopefully the Saints can find a comeback angle here. Uh, ooh, Shiro with a really good dash there. Actually going to try and keep it away from him. Beautiful pass from available to Shiro there. Trying to get that core into the uh, Fanshaw side. Those That little wall there is so annoying for Fanshaw to play around. Going to save the Saints uh, lock there. Keeping it alive for a little bit longer. Ember gets that lock unlocked. Shiro helping it out with the slimes, bank shots, and right in it goes. And once again, 1-1. One, one. Saints keeping this competitive, not going down without a fight. Maybe if they can win this set, they can turn around here, but it is looking a dire. Fanshaw in the lead currently just keeping up the pressure and they just open up these goals so quick but Bailable doing an amazing job on the defense holding it down and now Ember and Shiro gonna have to lead the charge they open up the net they're going all in here they're digging deep and they're about to get another goal but they don't quite get it Dubu gonna lead on the tofu gonna keep that up there that wall is just beautiful the space but now with an oh, elimination no. on the side of the saint it is a 2v3 situation sure Aizu leading the charge trying to get a bank shot doesn't quite land it and now it's back in Bailable's corner he's playing the defense they're all on the defense just trying to stall out time they still have the lockup on the goal the saints are doing amazing on the defense they just have to keep up the pressure and this should be another point going their way possibly here shiro is not in the best of situations with his health uh but it could work they are trying to get it down and about available gonna bank shot that one trying to keep it away the lock goes down juliet almost the getting tofu. it in tofu saves the day ladies and gentlemen it is one of the best substitutes ever very good very tasty uh, Very high in protein needs, as well, yes. but it's going to be crazy fast as it gets in on a bank shot out of nowhere. Wrong place, wrong time for Bailable as Juliet sinks in. And once again, here we are, two and one. This could be the last core we see, the last play we see for the ECAC Grand Finals. Here it is. Fanshawe could win it all right here. Saints keeping this one competitive though. They're not going to go down without a fight. Oh, Already God. the net is down and the pressure will be mounting on the side of Fanshawe. But the Saints still looking to keep this competitive, looking for one more point to even the scoreline. Oh! And they get it, making this two to two. Alrighty. This is close. One goal dictates whether we go to the next round or it's GG. This is it. It all comes down to this. If there's ever a set to win, the Saints need to win it now. The Tofu gets blocks the core in the wrong direction, but they get it out without a scratch. And now, Shiraisu and Ember leading the charge right here. Available on the defense still as the rest of Fanshawe gets in the position for a snipe. Goes for the pass, doesn't quite find it, as they're still mounting up the pressure. There's a big jump by Shiraisu and Perfect. opens up the goal for Fanshawe. And now, Bailable looking to go in for a triple attack. You're playing the midfield, trying to play up close and personal on the defense. Sure, they still have their luck, but you don't want to be too aggressive here, as now the goal is open here. Now Juliet goes in for the jump. Shiraisu unable to get control of the ball. This could be it. The pressure is mounting. Juliet's going in, but it gets cleared out by Bailable. But now it's back in Juliet's hands. But there's still up in the front line waiting for the pass he needs to get the game saving goal right here this is it he pops it up goes for the launch goes the wrong way and now it's back to Bailable's position sure Isaac goes for the pass Ember goes for a goal but it doesn't quite land and now this could be it Fanshawe is all in the ropes here but 
So are the Saints. This is absolute insanity right here. It could all be ended in one little misplay. If the Saints keep playing perfectly, though, as they have been, they could stand this, oh. but no, it crumbles eventually. And the Saints take their loss, and Fanshawe Fuel wins it all in yes. ECAC. Hey, can we talk for a second about the words per second you were just spewing? Yeah. That was insane. I can pop off. <laughs> Holy! Let's slow things down. Let's slow things. Yeah, let's slow down. things yeah. down. But congratulations to Fanshawe Fuel for winning in Omega Strikers, and congratulations to the Saints team as well for making it so far without a loss. But a loss does eventually come. Yep. Well, I mean, it kind of—it's kind of what happens when you have this kind of tournament format where you just like. You don't meet any of the other contenders, you just meet your bracket, and then it's kind of like, oh yeah, we just plowed everybody. And then you just see the person next to you, and you're like, surely we're just going to keep on going, right? And then sure. the finals are just, well, this. But hey, the Saints did really well. They, uh, they fought valiantly. Sometimes you take a W, sometimes you take the L. Speaking of taking an L, Nakutaikin on the ropes here, 10 HP, last place, not looking too good. But look who's at number one. Pitsy has yeah. enough points to win it. That's our boy. That is a, one of our Saints up there, could win it all here in the ECAC Grand Finals for TFT. Alrighty, let's see how this one plays out. They're going up against the Wolves, a very intense fight. Personally, I have lost to the Wolves multiple times, although it was not well. on the TFT Rift. Me too. Me it was too. on the Summoner's Rift. I have uh, done the same thing, mostly chickens though. Chickens always Chickens? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Chickens. Wrong character, wrong time. Uh, Thresh jungle doesn't work out too great. This is when I was starting. I didn't know what I was doing. Oh, fair enough, fair <laughs> enough. I mean, okay, funny story about the Rift. I had my friend come and play with me because I was like, I, I, when I was really starting off, and I was playing Caitlyn at the time, and uh, guess what I ended up doing? Sorry, I just need to comment on this effect in play right now. It's free infinite rerolls for the shop. Uh, you best be or not infinite, they're but a be lot. spamming those. It seemed like it was like maybe three free rerolls or more. They got oh, a okay. lot of value out of that. It's not infinite. Okay, okay. I was gonna say if it's infinite, just. Brrr. <laughs> but he did it like maybe five times or three times. That was crazy. But now, Naku Taiken. If he has to fall by anyone's sword, might as well be his friends. <laughs> I'll be okay. I, I'd say very valiant tale, but like still, I'd it much sucks. rather die helping my friend out, getting somebody exactly. else's percent low or something, you know? Instead of dying yeah. to my friend. But I mean, on the plus side, at least he's not removing- Wait, uh, he won. Oh, okay, wait, hold Pitsy, on. I think, showed mercy. Yeah. No, well, Pitsy lost that one, yeah. Or. Perhaps. Maybe Pitsy did Naku show Taiken. mercy and Naku Taiken is on a just comeback angle. Yeah, I mean, Naku Taiken comeback angle. What if, he just, yeah, what if he just rises through the ranks and stays at 10 throughout <laughs> the entire game? I'd love to see it. That would be an the amazing ten story. That would be... Oh, you have my bow. Mm, that's a reference to something. Ah. Uh, oh. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm what? Kidding. I'm kidding. Lord of the Rings. We know. We know. Okay. <laughs> I was about to say. <laughs> what kind of uncultured... Oh. <laughs> Nonetheless, speaking of culture, let's see what cultures these people are growing here. We have Reaper and Heavenly on the side of Naku Taiken. He's gold on Reaper. He's maxed that one out. Heavenly just about to breach that gold mark as well. Or can you even go gold with it? I don't think so. Oh, yes, you can. No. Uh, no, gold is cap. Gold is the cap? On no, no, with Heavenly. Else. It's at silver right now, but I don't see. Oh. Usually there's like a gray. Yeah, it's see, he's at gray. You, four and then seven is gold. I see, I see. Oh god, I'm right. about to... Pitsy, still in second place. Little Chubb right in front of him, though. Both contenders to take this one. As we look over at Bolts in here. We're gonna lose to Naku Taikin. Maybe this is a comeback angle for him. He does yep. have the big Yone. I mean, Yone is, uh... Yone is Yone. What, what class would you put Yone in? Uh, what do you mean? Like, like Summoner's Rift Yone. Yeah, character, what class? Uh, Ghost Man. 
Ghost. He's his own thing. Let's be real. He's a yeah. He, <laughs> he is. He can his disconnect own from his body and then uh, teleport right back. There's no other character like that. No. Well, like Echo Alt maybe, but he has it for an ability. You, well, no, because like Echo is an undo button. You just oh look, I Echo Yone and like oh. Uh, Okay, like, Echo and Yone are just champions that you play if you hate suffering the consequences of your own actions. <laughs> Don't we all? That is exactly what it is. Oh no, I just got dove? Oh, Nakata can regain oh. 15 HP. Wait, what? I don't know what mechanic that is. Maybe it's the Reaper mechanic? Maybe I need some, healing. some perk he picked where yep. if he's winning, he can maybe get himself back in this game. I mean, he is on a two-game win streak, so maybe he can keep those going. There's an Irelia on the field. Competitive. Yep. Lots of damage coming through here, oh, actually. Oh, he's against Little Chubb, who's in first right now. Oh, oh no. no. If there's anyone you don't want to go up against when you're in last, this is it. But maybe Nakutekin's going to be the Kingslayer right here. That Yone is massive. Yone is big and going through. What a dash. He's going to go on the back line, take <laughs> him out. He made it a 1v1 here in the front line, and I think... I think Nakutekin takes this one. All right, ladies and gentlemen, sing it with me. 200 years. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yep, that's 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 a Yone moment. That is a Yone moment, if anything. Yone is fighting the Malphite. Oh, look, there's an unattended Kale right there. Let me just split my soul from my body, one-shot the Kale, come back, finish off the Malphite, and then kill whatever the hell was by, uh, right next to the Kale. Yep. Oh, wow. What? Yone moment. What an exciting game of TFT, though. <laughs> Tom, Naku Taiken being able to get himself out of the last place position. Sure, he's in second last, but still, he might be able, able to make this one go a little bit further. And looking at Pitsy, he has Ooh. secured his first place spot right now at 91 HP. Yep, that is a very safe spot to be uh, in terms of HP and your closest opponent is at, uh, wait, that's 85 and then 80. Okay, you know what? It's not that safe of a spot. I take not it back. Not super safe, but still. It's like, position. it's alright. He is in first, right? At least there's that. Uh, so that will help for sure here. So we can see, I... Oh. In, in a way, I think maybe the Yone is going to carry a little too hard here. Just maybe. Is it tier 3 Yone? It is. And like, he heals a lot. He does. He, look at the items he's built. Yeah, Bloodthirster and two Titanic, uh, whatever it's called. Yep. He's looking pretty good in terms of health. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He vamp that all back. Now looking at Pitsy, he's going to win his fight as well. Yeah, I, I believe so, yeah. Yeah, he won. And he's going to continue to be in that first place spot. Yeah, wait, hold on. Do you get, like, the choice between blue and red cane in those game mode, too? Uh, I don't think so. I think it's just blue cane. Oh, okay, that cool. I'm seeing. Oh, well, wait, I mean, no, you're right. He's still snow moon cane. Maybe there is no choice. There is no choice. There Maybe is only tier basic three there's a choice? Maybe, yeah. Maybe that's still... That could make sense, yeah. Same, because I don't think it's going to be the same orb mechanic. No, probably not. Uh, to be fair, I've never played Kane in my life and never will, but... Uh, is, Nautilus grants you gold on enemy kill or ally death. Ooh. Yeah, that's gonna... If he can keep his... Um, his frontline alive so that he doesn't give gold... Yep. I mean, it's not a bad call. Yeah, there's some strategy to be had there. Try and play the survivability angle. As to not give too much gold. I mean, the, the, the Yone won't die, that's for sure. Definitely. Alrighty. Let's see it. Wait, is Yone just using the same auto attack every time? I just saw him go one, two, three, but like it was the same slash. Doesn't he have like a three hit combo or something? And wow, another win for Naku Taiken. Yeah, Naku Taiken is on fire right now. Hey, he's coming back. This is the win streak of win streaks. Five wins in a row. Hey, if there's a comeback angle like we were talking about, this is going to be it. It's, it's heavenly it's, and great now. <laughs> it's the 0-10 Yone power spike. Don't worry. Well, sorry. Oh, that is that is Blue Cane up there. It is? I think he might transform mid-battle, unless he is permanently Blue Cane now. Let's see. No, he's back to neutral. Oh, okay, cool. So, so I think he does transform halfway through the, uh, the, the fight. I see, I see. Okay, okay, okay. 
I wonder if it matters what his opponent is, though, or if it's always Blue Kane halfway through. We'll see. I guess we will, yeah. I don't know. Kane's a sophisticated champion that I just... Well, it's interesting how you tackle that in TFT as well. It's such yeah. a uniquely designed a champ for... Chief there it is. Yeah, yeah, he just goes blue after he completes a few hits, I believe. Ah, interesting, interesting. Two anvils, though, up for the grabs. Nice. I wonder what items we're going to get from those. We do have the free reroll as well. Yeah. There's three free rules right there. Are we going to okay. see any more? One. The Nico and the Keon. Wow. Okay. Look how many free rerolls he gets. What the? There, now he's out. All right. He didn't pick up anything, though. He picked up some stuff earlier, but yeah. not with those. That's about it. Hey, sometimes the RNG is not your favorite. And you got to be thanking your lucky stars that you get so many rerolls. Is, is that a Kindred or a Soraka? That is a Kindred. Ooh. Ooh. Wait, blue buff on Kindred. Well, yeah, that makes sense. Wait, does Kindred serve blue or red? Blue. Oh, okay. So it does make sense. Nice. There it is, and once again, Nakutaikin continuing the win streak with six wins. Hmm. Here it is, Pitsy taking a loss, though. Yeah, and the number one place, you can see it, there is a duel. Lil Chop versus Pitsy. And, yeah, uh, both qual contending to be the winners of yeah. this grand finals. It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be hard to uh, hard to win this one. And the, who is the um, the other one? There's there's Pitsy, there's a little Chub, and there's a third one. Clenvy, who is Clenvy? in last place right now Ooh. with nine HP. Yeah, not looking good right now. Not looking good at all, unfortunately. Um, yeah. But hey, what you're hoping for if you're Clenvy is for little Chub and Pitsy to not get the first place position, then you can try again for the next Yeah, one. well, I mean, if you're Chen V right now, what you want is Naku Taiken to win. Exactly. And to be fair with how Naku Taiken is He deserves a win at this point for oh, sticking, yeah. sticking it out. For sure. But, you know, all it takes is one loss to throw him off this win streak here. Wait, where's the Yone? Up front there. Oh, See, yeah. he gets big. <laughs> There's the big boost. There it is. He just dashes so much, it's hard to keep up with him. Naku Taiken eliminating our first player here. Eliminating Vuxen. Vuxen? Move over to Briar, Patchy, V, and Pitsy. And Pitsy looking to win this one, potentially. Still some back lines to clear. It's oh. very close, and Pitsy just barely wins. That's an AP Kindred. <laughs> okay. Never thought of that. Well, I think it all depends on what the abilities yeah, are. Yeah, like the AP ratios and stuff, yeah. Because most abilities have AP ratios instead of AD. Yep. But, oh my god, that is still... That is still whack to me. And there's the dump of the cash. Put one more. That piece de resistance there. The to Soraka. complete the build. Yes, Soraka. So now he's... Uh, Broke. If, if if Yone didn't have enough healing as is, he's got a pocket Soraka now. There it is. He has a little bit of a backline built up. A lot of frontliners here. Yes. Well, I mean, it's not like he really needs a backline. You know? No. Hey, look, it's the Minecraft map. Just needs map. some supports here and the Kindred there to come clutch. Yep. Kindred's the backline. That's all you really need. And, I mean, the Soraka's gonna... The Soraka's gonna heal for a little bit. Don't worry. Yone is barely even dropping, like, down 10% health. That's it. It's just... That's insane. Look at that! Naku Taiken looking very good. Did you even lose a character? I don't think you did. He might have lost one of his frontliners, but still. Very, very, very good efficient, round. yeah. And eight win streak. And look at that, he's already climbed. He was in last place when we tuned in, and yep. he's now in fourth. Yup. It's the comeback angle. It literally is the comeback angle. Holy. This is it. Pitsy and Briar Patchy still, or I mean, Pitsy and Lil Chub still battling it out for the winning position. Briar Patchy in second place right now. Robe in fifth. And Clemby in second last. Popcorn Par now in last. Yep. But wait, hold on. Both the Gwens are once again one next to the other. It's just one's eliminated. <laughs> Might be Popcorn Par, Par eliminated once again, along with that other Gwen, as they are not looking too great right now, health-wise. Yep.
Alrighty, looking at these uh, different team compositions, I really wonder how they will adapt to that fed Yone. Like, how do you how do you unfeed the Yone? I don't know. I think they are like Nakutaiken, great build, but it's not a lot. It's not stacked with three star or five well, stars. Well, no, right? but like it's like a funnel comp for the Yone. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's all built around this Yone. If this Yone falls, that will be it. But it's going to be tough to fell this Yone. Yeah, I mean, that boy is a tanky. Holy. I mean, yeah, the lead is just ridiculous. The amount of healing. he just, Maximum is like half health. You can't bring him lower than half health. That's insane. Wow. Okay. And here. Ooh. Is that Pitsy? I think that is Pitsy taking the loss right there. Yikes. Oh, okay. But still in second place as Lil Chub takes a big loss from Briar Patchy. Briar Patchy looking to be the one to win this one as of right now. It, so it would seem, but I mean, if I'm completely honest, oh, Naku Taiken. Clemby also on a win streak apparently on fire. Oh, okay. Wait, maybe there's a, maybe there's an angle. Maybe there's an angle. Honestly, I, I I'm putting my bets on Nakutaken right now. All right. It's Fed Yone. I believe too. What do, what do you do against Fed Yone? Yone is looking to be the hard carry for Nakutaiken, and I wouldn't have it any other way. This man's about to start one tricking Yone if it if it carries him. <laughs> oh. Still gonna battle it out against Nakutaiken here. Let's see yep. how this one shapes up. He wants to get back in this, but Nakutaiken looking very strong, starting from the bottom. Now we're here, defeating Pitsy, and continuing to hold themselves in this game. That is uh, an unfortunate turn of events for Pitsy. He was doing so well, and now, now it's not looking so well. But uh, hey, I mean, Nakutaiken is having a field day for sure. It's yeah. It's like all the number ones are, are are starting to lose, just all the time. Hey, you only have so much gas in that tank, you know. Only only so much luck to expend here in the TFT yep. space, you know. You could have all the skill in the world, which all these players do, and it you just have to try. Sometimes R and Jesus just says no. Exactly, it just comes down to a luck and manipulation skills at that point. Ah uh, yes, luck manipulation. I do love using RNG. Oh. You have to have all your Lucky charms at your disposal here. Man. Four leaf clovers. Horseshoe. I didn't eat my lucky charms this morning, I'm gonna be honest. No. <laughs> uh, That's why ooh. you're on the casting desk and not here in the ECAC Grand Finals. Uh, yeah, I'd have to eat a whole lot more lucky charms to even qualify for it. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, let's look at this. Nashor's Tooth, maybe? Nashor's Tooth angle? Ooh, IE? Nashor's Tooth? Julie Gauntlet? Nashor's Tooth. All right, going on to, yep, okay, it's an AP Kindred. Cool. Okay, Wukong, tier three. Interesting, interesting. Continuing to build this 10 win streak team. How long can he keep this up for? He has a Wukong there in the bot. He gets it. That's looking very, very strong. Yep, for sure. He still has a few free rerolls though. Against Briar Patchy though, who's at number one rate. Right, yeah, Yone carry. Yone carry. Yone carry. Oh my god! It wasn't even a contest. This is a comeback from Naku Taiken. Yeah. Already in third place here. Pitsy is looking to be the one to beat on his end. Yep. Naku Taiken is now in second place, but uh, uh, Cleansey is also doing pretty well. Like they're on fire right now. It's going to be interesting to see how those two match up together. Ooh. See who wins that. Akutagen just barely... Oh, he could level up right now. Uh-huh. But I think he's going to wait for this combat before he does so. Yep. Getting to that level, uh, what is that, 10? What makes me wonder... Oh, there it is. Just want to surprise his opponent with a last second swap in. Ah, I see, I see, I see. Oh, he has two Arcanist and six Heavenly. This is looking to be dicey. Here he is and facing out against. Is he facing out against? Can't quite see. 
Is this one of the NPC characters? NPC characters? So Sometimes they'll put you up against an Oh, the bots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, you're you're basically talking about every wow. champion that isn't Zed. We need to comment on this. Naku Taiken taking the king's throne here from the bottom wow. to the top. 12 win streak. He was at 10 HP. He was. He got 15 from the heavens above, and here he is at the throne, the king's yep. throne. Wait, so there are three people that can checkmate in this round. That is okay. Pitsy, Little Chub, and who's the third one? Pitsy, Little Chub, and Chenvi, or Clenvi there. So the Fish only Fish. other person who's on fire. Yes. Which so, means it's so, going to come so, down to that. Something we're going to have to comment on is this is the last game for tonight either way. Oh, okay. So if Naku Taiken wins this, he's going to push this back another week. The grand finals goes again. This is Clemby versus Naku Taiken. Whose streak will end right here? Will Clemby continue his dominance or will Naku Taiken defend his throne up at the top? The Yone's going in. It's as close as it's ever been for Naku Taiken. There it is. Both teams getting very, very low. And it is going to be Naku Taiken taking the win. Please nerf Yone. Eliminated Clemby also. Wow. Now. And Little Chub, it is down between a battle of the Saints. Pitsy v Naku Taiken. Brian Patchy's also there. Yeah, he's But there. in terms of wins, it is only Pitsy left on the board. Yeah, I think uh, I think my bet for Pitsy win was a really good one. I think Naku Taiken's going to win this. Uh, was, uh, yeah, Naku Taiken. Bleh, I said right. Pitsy, my bad. Yeah, Pitsy? Looking very good, very competitive, but ah. Naku, Taiken, Naku Taiken can just dig He's got to fed Yone. He can, this Yone, I don't think he's ever going to forget this. No, no. From the brink, 10 HP on the bottom, on the ring, on the ropes here. Yeah. One punch away from knockout, and he climbs back to the top. But hey, it's not over yet. He could still nope. take a loss. He could still get knocked up. The 13 win streak is going. Will 13 be his lucky number, or will it be his undoing? He's a one more win on the board here. Maybe knocking out Briar Patchy. Maybe taking a big chunk out of Pits Pitsy. What's it going to be? This is Briar Patchy, the former king. This is the duel to see if he'll still stay in this thing. Yup, let's see how this duel goes out. Briar Patchy is okay, yeah, no, he's done. Oh wait! It's competitive. No, it's, it's competitive. Yone. My bad, it's Yone. You I don't know why I said anything. You forgot to account for the Yone. Yes, the uh a variable. Uh, now, this is it. Everybody else off the board. All that is left are Saints. <laughs> <laughs> will a Saint win this Grand Finals? Oh, yes. Or will Naku Taiken push this one back another week? Oh, this is the part where Naku Taiken just says, I am sorry, little one. <laughs> I must do what I must do. Oh. If I know Naku Taiken, he's not the type to give the win to nope. his friend. He is going to go out with a blaze here. This is intense. This is one of the most intense games of TFT I have ever witnessed. We are not going to take it starting out very strong, eliminating all of it, but it's a very Red good Yone. fight. The back line is still staying healthy there. The Wukong doing so much oh, wait, damage. Hold on. But now Pitsy eliminating them one by one, leaving what? the end for Knocker Titan's win streak. And now they are uh, looking to be neck and neck on terms of health. Chief? Did I just see what I just saw? What? The Fed Yone got unfed. That doesn't happen. Oh, did all his stacks leave? Well, no, he doesn't have stacks, oh. but like, it's still a Yone. How did that happen? All right, well, you know what? Shelly's here. Shelly will rectify the situation. Shelly will take this one. Oh my God, Shelly's got insane attack speed. But not enough to be. Oh well, no, but like, still killed the unit. Jeez. Shelly was angry. Putting the Rabidon's death cap. Of course, that's going on. The Kindred here, just building up that APS. 
far as it will go. Now Nukadagan re-rolling one last time, trying to find a few stragglers here. Not going to find anything, though. All right, this is the last one. Will it be the last one? Well, unless Pitsy somehow manages to... Uh, somehow manages to make it out. Let's see. I think uh, on the ropes once again. Nakutaken might lose this one. This is looking like this is gonna go Pitsy's way as Nakutaken loses his backline very quickly. Gets a few though. Gets the Wukong out of the way. Yone's gone though, and the big bruisers are gone. On Wait, side. Kindred is still alive? Kindred's still chipping away. Okay, the, the uh, tank. She kiting, she kiting though. With the the, the rocket the healing. The Soraka healing, trust! It's down to the Kindred. Will the Shmoves take the win? No, Azir is going to win. And Bird congrats, man. Pitsy, for winning the ECAC Grand Finals. And that is going to be all we have here today. Yeah, that was, uh... That was one of the broadcasts of all times. Uh, we had, like, what, three finals? Two finals, two finals plus a qualifier. Yeah, it's playoff season, and we're just wrapping up for these ECAC games. But one heck of a show it for was sure. today. So, Unfortunately, we didn't get to see the end of league, but that was a win. They're going to Orlando. Hey, I mean, that's that's a plus. Although, wait, are we oh, We don't get to broadcast that one, do we? Oh, they're in Orlando. I'm sure they have their own broadcast team Such... down there. Not going to fly us out, unfortunately, but maybe someday we'll take a trip down there, Gabriel. <laughs> I don't want to go there. I just want to broadcast it. Oh. We can still be in the desk, you know? Okay, yeah. We'll, we'll see what happens. But nonetheless, uh. that is all we have in store here today. So we're going to go and thank everybody. Thank you, everybody in the back. That's going to be Mr. Danners on the production angle. Thank you to... Daniil on the direction. Thank you to Amanda on the graphics. And thank you for, to Theo for observing League of Legends for that one game we did get to see. And fortunately, Riot Client wasn't in the cards. But Riot, fix your client, please. <laughs> I'd appreciate it. Thank you for joining me up here on thank the Thank you desk for having game. me. It's always a joy to cast with you. And thank you to our sponsors, Tim Hortons, Subway, HyperX, St. Clair SRC, and the St. Clair College Alumni Association. And thank you, viewers, for joining me here for this wonderful day of playoffs. And join us potentially tomorrow for a Rocket League match. It's still maybe yeah, in the cards. Like, I believe that's around 7 if you want to tune in for right, that. Yeah. But might not happen. We'll see if we have the people for it. But we also have Sakura Fest this weekend on the Saturday. So come join us for that. That's why we have this lovely tree here and why I'm wearing this lovely little pin. And... I think that's all we have to say. Oh, make sure to follow our socials to stay uh, up yes, to date socials. on everything Saints-related events, tournaments, uh, videos from players, get to know us, you know, stay up to date on everything. We have every kind of so social media you could want to follow. Actually, that's we don't there. have a Reddit. That's it. Oh, yeah. Fair enough. But <laughs> nonetheless, you can follow us on most social medias. But with all that said, that's all we have here for tonight. So thank you, everybody, for watching, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.